Hi, I'm Russ Camarda, an independent filmmaker and actor in New York, and in between the chances I get to do my creative projects, I love to sit down and talk with other artists to see how it is they do what they do, how they take art and use their craft to reveal truth to an audience. So in this series of conversations, you'll meet some people you may recognize, some people you won't recognize, but they're all independent artists and we'll get in depth in a long form conversation to see how it is they do what they do. Welcome to Art Craft Truth. This time on Art Craft Truth, a special episode, Film Financing, the behind the scenes of how to get the money if you're an independent filmmaker. Returning guest Stefano DeFray brings his partner Laura Pellegrini of Rosso Films. They have tons of independent film projects under their belt and they explain to us how it is you look for, find, and get the money to finance that independent project. Check it out, lots of great info here for the independent artist. A lot of magic here. A lot. Movie magic. Roll. Yo. Rolling. Okay. All right. We're good. We're good. So. Brought a guest for you. Here's uh, the th yeah. Here's yeah. the thing. You guys, you are the first. Here's the here's your first two two ways for me. Love this. First returning guest. Thank you. Okay. Thank That's you. pretty pretty awesome. And you brought uh, a, a lovelier face this time yeah. than your own. Softer on the eyes. Which Softer. is even even better. Um, and uh, and. What was the other one? You're the first returning guest. Oh, and you're the first time I have two people on my couch. On the mm. couch. Wow. So that's okay, very... so this is a very big honor. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. I'm just going to drop yeah. this down because it's hiding your face sure. a little bit. There we go. I feel, I, feel like, uh, <laughs> I feel like I didn't have to do anything to persuade Laura to come on no. this. She was like, no. she just jumped and she's like, yes. And I was like, well, you don't even know the day. She's like, I don't care. I'll, I'll come. doesn't matter. I'll, I'll do the show with the rest. Very exciting. And you know, we're going to, we'll, we'll bounce all over the place because we'll probably get into some craft and fun stuff because now I have yeah. actual filmmaking team. Yep. So that's exciting. But, uh, but you, you wanted to talk about something that I think is, uh, so valuable to especially independent artists and that's the financing end because yep. we can talk about art and craft all we want but when you want to get the project done the you, know, the day, yeah. where, you know where you know where you who's paying for it and how, where are you getting that money and you guys um have a, a successful film company that you've how long have you guys been doing your particular team six years yeah. six years six, six years. years so six years with a whole bunch of projects behind you so clearly you know where to find it and and or at least have some good idea on how, where to find it yeah so let's dive right into it um first of all how did you come together? How did you were both actors first? I feel like this, I knew this was going to be a question. I, I knew right <laughs> the away. The genesis of Russell Films. So, yeah. so yeah. we met, we met in a, in a casting. Uh, so <clears throat> Laura was in a casting office for a casting class with actually Donna McKenna. Oh. And I had just done, um, I was brought in as an actor who had just worked on an under five for Blue Bloods. Okay. And I was friends with, with Donna and I met, she was like, you know, come in, come in and see these actors, like come in and see like these, these actors and you know, you can sit in the class and, and just like, you know, drop by at lunch. So I, I went down to this, this, uh, this studio where she was holding a class and uh and i saw a bunch of actors doing monologues and uh, actually doing scenes they were like all different scenes and she was critiquing the scenes and basically like a scene study class um and uh i met i think i went up and i did a scene with one of the kids and then i and i just saw all the different people and i saw laura and she talked to me afterwards she was like very well first of all her, her audition was very good um Aww. so that stood out to me like very very punctuated and uh it was very rich very emotional and uh very truthful and i remember afterwards after the class she like came up to me and, and we were just like talking so a little more. basically she gave you attention yeah yeah it's pretty much yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. all it that's really what did it yeah yeah you know men are very yeah. easy yeah. if like we get simple-minded creatures yeah. yeah it's like oh wow that's a very <laughs> punctuated yeah piece of work <laughs> i wonder if oh she's she's coming over here. <laughs> <laughs> and i remember we yeah. uh we talked about we were bonding over films we were we were talking about i think it was my own private idaho because yeah. i said to stefano i was like not to give your ego any more of a boost but has anyone ever told you that they remind you of river phoenix and he was like uh, that does wonders for my ego uh -huh. and then we just we bonded naturally over films you know that's that's what 
Yeah. That was the, the consensus and just had the same taste in a lot of things like right, right. Godard and Antonioni and all oh, the French New Wave classics. All right, okay. and, but, so, but it was yeah. many years it was many it was many years until we uh we started a production company together. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, that was like even longer than six years ago because originally, fun fact, Laura was directing films before I was. Okay. So she had cast me in a film. Um, and I th that's how our relationship really started. All right. So, so at what point do you start working together as filmmakers? Because you're, you know, she's, she's working with you as a, and I, when, when does that happen? I think it was really during that film okay. that I, I recognized in Stefano a real a real ally, but also someone with the potential to direct because we were doing a lot of character work. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember distinctly this one night we were going over a monologue that his character had. And he was like, I got to do something right now. And he takes out the red pen. And I was like, the red pen of doom. <laughs> what has he got in mind with that red pen? And And we were just talking about things in a very, very practical, pragmatic way of... Of, of, of how to convey this character's experience. Right. And I remember thinking like, this, this, is a really, this is a really good, healthy relationship, you know, a really good artistic good. kind of bounce board. Right, you, you, know? you have this chemistry right off where you're like, I could, I could be on the set with this guy for 12 hours Absolutely, if I had to. <laughs> okay. yeah, if I, if I had to. And, we, and, you know, that's ultimately what wound up happening. But that for me was like a real eye-opening okay. experience. Because that's huge. You know, it's not just the working day, especially if, you, if you're going into production with somebody mm -hmm. and it's weeks of prepping and months of... Yeah. It's, this is, you're going to see that face all the time. Yeah, exactly. And River Phoenix or not, <laughs> at some point you're going to be like, listen... Wears off, yeah. Yeah, listen, yeah the charm. I'm, I'd rather have Clooney at this point. So yeah. let's, all right, so, um, yeah. so what was the first project where you officially said, we are this, we're doing this together? I'm going to let Steph talk about this because yeah. it really... This was a, a brainchild of his that ultimately we both worked on, but... I think I think it was a, a French film, a, a, a film that with a French title called Tu me manques. And um, it was a film that uh, I wrote and had it was about three women whose lives intersect right, right. and end up in the same basically meeting. Pla they 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 never meet, but their lives intersect in the same location. And um, uh, I had cast uh two other women and then Laura in it. So there were three women that I, that I cast into it. And we, we, we really wrote the shot list together. I'd written the piece and, uh, and that was the first time that we really did literally everything production wise, financing, um, just the whole development, the editing of it together. All right. So in this, in this first baby, mm -hmm. who's, how do you divide up your, your uh, your jobs and your re like who you know it's a great question that, it is a, a great it's, question it's a great question yeah <laughs> yeah How do uh, so 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 laura and i always give the 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 metaphor of two songwriters or or let's say a, a duo like like let's say the smiths that has like johnny marr and stephen morrissey where they don't do anything matching right so one person writes lyrics and yeah. one person writes the music and then you have like lennon mccartney who 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 would who would overlap mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and i think laura and i are much more the lennon mccartney thing it's it's hard to know years later six years i, I don't even know when we look at scripts whose person's what person's ideas are what i would say that um for the writing part usually you know to laura's credit the conceptions of the writing are usually her sketches from the beginning all right and then i usually get a first pass at the writing and then we'll filter through and make adjustments but the shot lists I'll do the the sketches yeah. of the shot lists. Okay. So she'll do the first passes of our shot list. Yeah. I would say that's all right. So so what's interesting about overlapping though is, uh, it's you know ripe for conflict every now and then. If somebody did something that you were gonna do already or you did it already, you know, is, is the communication obviously has to be is key like all the time. Yeah. It's I'm key. doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this. yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, I, I I would I would say that. You know, what we always say, you know, is that our tastes make us survive. Yeah, exactly. You know, if we don't have the same tastes, I, I would, first of all, being co-directors that we've been for 
all these projects, whether it's, it's feature films, narratives, documentaries, it's not a natural relationship. I would never recommend yeah. someone to go into a relationship to expect success from two people mm. um, because there's so much ego and how much space you have. You're sharing, you're really sharing your, 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 not just, I mean, your ideas, but you're, you're having to be flexible. It's, it's like a, it's a marriage, right? Right. But, but, but your tastes survive and, and you quickly know if you guys don't like the same stuff, it's impossible to last. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah, absolutely. And just doing quality checks with one another too is, is so essential. You come to the table with an idea and, and the litmus test because the other person, you know, they'll, they think similarly to you, but also they have their own perspective of things too. It's like, is this a good idea? Can we make this work? And, and sometimes the, the pushback is yes, but we have to do this in order to make it work. Mm. So there's this constant, a constant, uh, flow of communication is necessary and and having that essential um similarity in taste i think is is vital all right so let's let's get right into the reason we'll we'll, we'll probably come back around to more fun <laughs> stuff too uh, later i can see already yeah but let's get right back into why why you're here today which is the financing part first of all as a team who was who had to handle this stuff who was the one who dove in first but bo both both of us pretty much yeah okay both From of the us get -go, yeah. so what what was the first thing you were you tried to do well, first thing that we did was from, from I would say, Tumimank, where we got a, a grant from someone from the MoMA who was on the board All right. that was a connection that I had had. But how to proceed in that relationship, what the expectations were from that producer was something that we always intimately discussed because we realized, and this is part of this conversation of why we want to come back and sort of give advice to, to young emerging filmmakers or even established filmmakers, is that money is such an emotional aspect mm -hmm. you know whether you you if whether you go through grants or especially when you go with the producers or many producers that we've had you're you're always every individual that you're you're exchanging um money f uh, in a relationship with there's an emotional component there's a sense of 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 a, a, a lack of of um control and safety that they're trusting they're entrusting you yeah, with something absolutely yeah so in that process for Tumimank, we had um, we had probably raised about four thousand six hundred dollars, and we 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 did it through through investors and what the expectations were of that investor, and that was fundamental in understanding what the relationship is. And so through we have our, our own playbook of kind of what is the process that we go through and ask people. All whenever right, so they, they become, I want to I want to get yeah. into the, yeah. the, into the, the playbook, playbook, but yeah. first, that first time out, you know, uh, when you throw out a word like investor, yeah, you got to find them. Yeah, right. I mean, you got to find that that uh, person with that disposable income or looking for the right offer. Like, where did you go? How did you do? Like, how did you even know where to go? And what was your thought process that way? Serendipitously, I mean, for for that, that was me meeting somebody at the MoMA who knew me personally okay. and were going to had pro a, ha, the some of the producers that we've met over time mm -hmm. were people who had established income and weren't necessarily in the finance world uh, weren't necessarily in the film world right. and had a burning desire to be part of a project so if you have first time investors who who understand that most independent films lose money and are capital losses mm -hmm. you're trying to structure you're trying to first of all first of all i like to give the bad news up front right away <laughs> that's the first this thing be transparent not make any money. yeah well it's it's not so much that the film's not going to make money but there are other ways too i mean another part of our playbook is you know what is what can you have in your company that is a, a, a tax write-off? Like what, can you get a fiscal sponsor that, that makes it a 501c3? Right. You know, so 501c3s are so beneficial because people who have a large amount of, you know, personal income, they can write off a, a specific amount that has been invested to the company or to the specific project and that amount gets a tax a tax write-off or right. a tax break. So you're, you're 
you're calling yourself you're L, you're making like a, a little LLC or something right. exactly. for the film company and you're right. you're making that a, a 501 C3 C3, C3. or not, yeah. pro, not right. for profit right so or the or in other words if we can really if you really yeah. want to get into Let's the playbook is that is that our company is an LLC it's a for profit LLC but for a specific project we have to then uh, apply to right to fiscal sponsors who then get on board and they they are the ones that classify and issue the 501c3 so for example creative vision uh, creative visions i think is is for our for right. our, for our document or for a right. feature document exactly right? um that's one of them ifp is which is another pretty established one that that was also a fiscal sponsor from moonlight with barry jenkins right is for our our narrative feature so there, we use separate companies sometimes right. because each one each fiscal sponsor has different parameters right. so let's right. let's back yeah. up because we're, we're now we're deep in the weeds right already. Yeah, yeah. we're already there <laughs> yeah you already you, you already took me there i came i came rep prepared yeah prepared. you sure did man. you came not, with the playbook he's not playing around so let's define some terms for folks out there sure fiscal sponsor investor what what are the define those because let's let's just take a blank slate of the indie artist the indie filmmaker out there who has their script it's polished it's ready to go they've even put together their lookbook and their mm -hmm. pitch and their whatever mm -hmm. and now they're just like i just need some cash to make this thing happen is it is the first step your circles you know, making a list of, you know, who could help me here and then and finding those people or where or where do you find that money? And then second, once you've got this sort of idea of where to go, now you can define those terms, you know, uh, um, the, the fiscal sponsor, the, the investor. How do you define those things? So first you talk, you could, no, no, you, go, go yeah. and then and then. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. What do you want to say? So I was just going <laughs> to say that that uh, we're assuming in this conversation mm -hmm. that before we get into the weeds, that you've done your due diligence for all the Kickstarters, all the Indiegogo. Correct. So all the crowdfunding. All the crowdfunding. So that, so that in, in other words, in other words, like that's the first place you should start. No kidding. Absolutely. I, I, Absolutely. I would. Why would you say that? I would even say an Indiegogo because it's it's a good way to um it, it's a good way to crowdfund for the people who know your who who really want to take a chance on you as an artist and invest in something creative <laughs> like and then once you get a certain amount of money then through word of mouth it tends to spread naturally like if people see three hundred dollars attached to a project they're going to feel more inclined to give more money to it because they want to see you reach your goal now the good thing about an indiegogo is that you know they take a very very small percent of the, the money that you do make. Whereas right. with a Kickstarter, they incentivize you by saying, if you don't meet this goal, you actually don't get any of the money. Yeah, okay. correct. Um, so, I, you know, Indiegogo is a Well, what's interesting about the go. crowdfunding thing, uh, that I, I'm thinking of this in reverse. So I always thought, especially if your crowd's not that big, right? Uh, this is great for finishing it. Yeah. It's like, I, I got the big money in, I got the movie made. Now I got to get some advertise. I got, but I have something to put on Indiegogo or Kickstarter. I have a, a film or trailer. I have something to show people, and now they can give me that last ten grand I need or whatever. I can, I can finish it with that. But you're saying start with that. Yeah, we, we've always done the opposite. Interesting. Absolutely. We've always done the opposite because because it's worth it's it's spread sort of like a, a vibe. Is that is that what? And it is? that's hard. It's I find I find the the crowdfunding for us who who are more like hands-on people harder i mean mm. it's 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 taxing to mm -hmm. to ask for money from <laughs> yes. your from, from your from your friends and your family <laughs> right. who often are other artists who don't have very much money they no. don't they don't they're in the same boat essentially other right. artists yeah so so i would i would do the hard stuff first okay all right yeah. so let's go from there so that's your first thing so typically what are you going to get out of a seven you know, seven, five yeah. or seven grand, five something. to yeah. seven thousand. Okay, so now funds. what do you do with that? To st does that help you then find the other people? Yeah, you put it in es put it in escrow account. Yeah, okay, sorry. So you don't even produce something right off the bat. No, I would no. no. Okay. Don't touch. It. Put it in an escrow account exactly, and then and then start to bring people on board to say, you know, that I, I do have I do have funds attached to this project. But this is what this is what I'm going to need in order to get to that shooting day or okay. you know, get X Y Z accomplished. All right. So it's it's like uh, 
third party endorsements. Like I got cash yeah. in the bank. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what I got, but I got cash in the bank right. and I just need some more. I mean, produce, producers who are going to give, who are, who are making a financial commitment to let's say what we've got, I mean, 10, let's say 15, 20,000, <clears> they're, um, th they're much more impressed if you've been able to raise five to 7,000 through, through crowdfunding than an idea. Okay. or a treatment right. it's 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 basically showing that you've cut your teeth okay. on the hardest way possible all right so before we get into play two right, right still on round one is, yeah. the, is, is the crowdfunding what are you doing on <clears throat> indiegogo and kickstarter or whatever what are you what's the offer what's the what are you yeah. showing them so oftentimes with those with those sites you do have to um set up a perk system or a reward right. system so you know if you put in 10 bucks you you automatically are guaranteed credit in the film you're going to be a part of this film in some capacity right and that's going to be shown in the credits um and then the higher up you go you start to offer more tangible rewards you know whether it's memorabilia from the film or like passes to the film it's really to to just further incentivize a people with river phoenix. a date with river phoenix god Which rest be, his soul exactly that would be impressive <laughs> if you could pull that off exactly and then and then if they reach the really you know um let's say uh we've uh, never auctioned you off by the way never auctioned me off <laughs> that's i know a good idea. that's that's kind of like the you know the that's, last resort I think yeah. we should do that <laughs> yeah. that's for that big oscar push yeah there you, you go raise exactly. another 700 bucks oh, or yeah. thousand dollars absolutely it. um but you know say they say they give uh four to five hundred then they they're given an executive producer role plus all the aforementioned right. rewards okay. you know so that's like the but that's a good way to incentivize people right, and make so them feel a part of the it's process. It's just finding tiers for what you, yeah. what number you need and what you want to give. But what are you? I, I'm not too familiar with it. Don't isn't there something that I got to look at, or is it just an idea? Like, are you presenting a treatment? Are you presenting some photos? Yeah, are that's you a good a trailer. I that's mean, a, that's what's a good. What's the tease? Yeah, that's a yeah. that's a that's a good point. And so I th I think what we try to do is usually shoot a concept that is not necessarily the film, but visuals have to so uh, we always shoot a pitch which is usually you know her and i sitting on the couch sure sure yeah uh, sort of like this, this sort of is, like, like this very similar a little more you know yeah. together we're but... more i think angled in a different <laughs> yeah. way um, always with the same color scheme yeah right nice. matching patterns <laughs> matching nice. patterns and um <laughs> and we we introduce what the project is about and then we usually show a let's say a, a, a minute treatment of something even if it's not the actual film yeah we'll sh we'll put together something a little okay. creative package after we introduce and it just to really yeah. get nuts and bolts yeah you're that's out of your own pocket uh, we pay for it yeah absolutely right. you you pay for that. yeah yeah the upfront cost absolutely. is 100 percent. you I'm have just, to I'm just taking the indie yeah. filmmaker to the you yeah. have to, yeah. to yeah. the stage we where we pay like, for i it. gotta make a trailer yes first. right yeah. Yeah. you have yeah you should that's you should 100 percent. the cutting yeah. of it the ed meaning the editing of it the pr the, the, the the filming of that getting sure. somebody yeah. to film it on a on you know whatever a dslr a dslr usually because sure. yeah. it's just static shots yeah okay but yeah all right, so a little tease, uh, a little uh, pitch, a little uh, whatever. Get to know us as Get filmmakers. To know us. This is who we are. What your what the theme of it is, what what your goal of it mm -hmm. is, you know, the whole thing, and then a tier system on a on a crowdfunding thing. So now you're you're at phase one. Your yeah. people are sending in their fifty dollars, and you're getting close to your five or six grand. But Correct. You right. need. We're talking features here or shorts? What do we? Both. We would do both. So, both. so both. So you know, depending on what kind of thing you're, you you could be anywhere from, you know, fifty thousand to you know, oh yeah, four million dollars yeah. on a tiny little picture. So now you got your first few grand. Right now, where do we go? <laughs> this is what we want to know. Okay. So after we, after you do that, you well, the first thing that I would say once you get that money before you even approach investors is I would try to get a fiscal sponsor. Okay. I, Define these terms. What okay. is the fiscal sponsor? Great. A fiscal sponsor is somebody who comes involved in the project. There are institutions that are considered uh, non-for-profit. And so what they're able to do is usually attach themselves, but they'll only accept certain projects that fit their criteria. So let's say, let's use our example of Creative Vision. It's a company based out of California. They do normally... Uh, documentaries that have to do with social issues, political issues. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've done political films before, The Girl Who Cannot Speak, The Day I Had to Grow Up. We have a documentary about graffiti, graffiti in the 1980s. We, with our pitch, put we haven't shot a single frame yet. Mm -hmm. We just have a deck 
we have maybe a 75. We, we're pretty intricate with our pages. So our decks are, are very quite, again, yeah. you have a lot of time on your hands in the beginning <laughs> and you have no money. So, you know, don't put together a deck that is only, you know, have a small deck that is maybe like 10 pages, but then just have a, a defined deck. Just So a, yeah. a, like basically your synopsis, okay. your director's vision, mm -hmm. right. a log line. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, an attachment of who's on board. Their right. bios give you a sense of the quality of people. The other term for it is lookbook. A, a lookbook. Yeah. yeah, a lookbook is definitely part of it. Yeah. Having visual coherency, like what films you're, you're thinking of basing your piece off right. of. Um, a budget, a budget. too. Yeah. Right. I would put exactly. a budget in there. Mm -hmm. And for particular um, uh, um, financial, uh, what was the term? Uh, fiscal sponsor. Fiscal sponsor. sponsor. Um, I would think you're trying to angle that particular pitch to, to that, meet that to what sure. to serve what because you want to be their their solution correct that's right asking for something yeah that's you right. want to because a lot because a lot of them have what's nice about also a fiscal sponsor is that they have uh resources so ifp which is now called the gotham mm -hmm. um is that right it's mm -hmm. called the gotham yeah, yeah it's they, formally known as formally, IFP. For, they call it formally known yeah. as ifp they have become uh they have a lot of resources available because they only select a certain amount so when you get a fiscal sponsor and it doesn't matter whether it's a famous fiscal sponsor or a small one what you're really looking for is the fact that an investor who gives let's say fifty thousand dollars would be able to get back let's say 20 or 25 right. as a tax write-off you're basically mitigating the risk mm -hmm. the financial risk mm -hmm. so that your, your, let's go through the nuts and bolts, yeah, right? Absolutely. Once you go through that application, there's usually somebody in the admissions board who spends a lot of time with you talking about whether they're going to accept your project. Knock on wood, let's assume you get your project. You know, we're all optimists in this room. So you get your project uh, set up. You're then setting up a new bank account with them that has them seeing the transparency of what's in that account and what isn't. Now, it's going to feel awkward as a filmmaker when checks are yeah. not being written to you <laughs> right. you're already bleeding money you're already spending a lot of money raising a lot of your 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 own capital your own capital to put together the the crowdfunding so now you're thinking to yourself oh my god i, I this money's going to you know another another fiscal sponsor this is going to another bank account but they're needing that transparency because you're developing a relationship and they want to know how much money's coming in yeah that account becomes the source where you then are working with the fiscal sponsor of what you're pulling out that money for in the contracts you you usually have i mean your own you have the right to spend that money i would think so yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. but but you, you still like nobody's saying wait, wait a minute six you, trips to mcdonald's what's that about but there's over <laughs> i mean you yeah. have to like everything right they have to have oversight you're doing oversight as well as you get to bigger fiscal sponsors you'll have different audits and some grants have audits as well that you have to provide audits for specific years especially if it's a feature film yeah um but that process is very good so once you get accepted they have resources and those resources tap into other films that have then done the whole way laura and i are big fans i don't want i feel like i'm talking too much no, no, no. but our, our big fans of role models yes and we can talk sort of like when you feel when you see other films that that have been involved with the same fiscal sponsors mm -hmm. that you have well such as moonlight with formerly ifp now the gotham i mean barry jenkins is a is a huge inspiration of ours yeah, and you want to see sort of how they've completed their film. Sure. Exactly. So you want to see those projects, whatever projects that they've had. Right, and that, you want to try to match that trajectory in some way. Mm -hmm. right? and see how, how they did it. Yeah, and how they got that the, cr to cross that finish line. Yeah. So that's a huge advantage. All right, so let's let's get to the, the, the blueprint of where you go look for that. Is this something that an independent filmmaker could take the step of, you know, getting on IMDb Pro looking breaking down every technical finding all the the weeds of, of a particular film could you find where they got that yeah, yeah. Google. On? Google, google too google imdb pro um looking back i mean if you don't have a ton of experience going to festivals but just people that we've met at festivals programmers producers they, they have a lot of insight into that process of finding a good fiscal sponsor as well so really having the the knowledge to to look into that toolbox and say oh yeah i did meet so and so at this event 
I should really tap into that resource mm. to see what else they might know. Is there a particular, like, um, is it like at the end of the year? Is that a good time to get, like when people are looking to dump some tax write-offs and cat, like, is there, are, are there any times when you try and do it or? Uh, I, I, um, yeah, for the taxes have to be done by the 31st, but for our, for, as a filmmaker for the application, I would say. Just jump in. Jump in Just and get, get it. it. Don't eat. I yeah. mean, there's so many things that can get in the way your own life, your family relationships. Just right. make the application yeah. right away. I want to. Because they accept things on a rolling basis too. Like it's, it's, there's, if you reach out to a creative visions, let's say, um, they're not going to say like, oh, our, our, you know, our fiscal year is over. That's it. Like it's, it's on okay. a rolling basis right, that right. they accept projects. Gotcha. Right. And exp I mean, you can explain a little bit about, about rolling basis. It's a grant term where. Yeah. Rolling basis, basis yeah. means there's no strict deadline for a, um, a submission. They won't say, you know, by February 21st, 2021, we're closing the bill until the next year. Right. They're Are accepting there, it on a rolling do, basis do throughout a lot, the year. Do, these, do they have uh, limits as to how many kind of projects they are fiscal sponsors looking for some do uh, yeah. yeah some, like, some yeah. do five a year or some do oh, yeah. yeah some yeah. do okay. yeah the more competitive they are yeah sure okay but yeah. but i have i have a question for you so i i actually don't i know that we met uh creative vision through chris who, correct who had a documentary at netflix which mm -hmm. was your contact yeah okay but i'm not even sure how we got IFP and the Gotham. How IF did you get? How did you? How did you do this? So IFP, I was in. So it was just through the rigmarole, rigmarole of research when we had a grant writer that we were working right, with, right, David. Exactly. Yeah, okay. From like 2017, 16, right. 17, I want to say, and while we were applying for grants, I found IFP, which I later learned was a fiscal sponsor, just just through submitting, and that's when the whole process of applying for a, a fiscal sponsor became so important to us mm -hmm. because then it would make us more accessible to the grants that we were actually applying for. Right. So it was almost like working in reverse that we found it. So the more, the more money you get on board from different places, it snowballs into, it's, 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 it's like casting. It's once you get the one name attached, then maybe another name will talk to you. Cause so you, look more, same, so you look more successful. Right. That's the more right. money you have coming in from this. So when you're doing these things, whether it's grants, fiscal sponsors, individual investors, crowdfunding, the money's coming from all different places. Mm -hmm. Is it all a bunch of different bank accounts? Like, like the yeah. the 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 Indiegogo, yeah. the fiscal sponsor doesn't have to see no. what no. that is. And different no. bank accounts. You know, Uncle Frank who wants to give you a hundred grand or whatever. Like, you know, nobody has to see everybody's right. stuff. It's just whatever their particular. Okay. Yeah. What, whatever the, the whatever the specific section of the the agreement that you have right. mm -hmm. is is what your is 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 whatever you have to declare right yeah. for for that the money that you raise individually is as, as Indiegogo that's your own personal sure. money right because Correct. you guys have you guys have done that through through your own you've also put up that own money on your on your own um, and I want to ask you this one to just to go back to that one bit about the deal with the fiscal sponsor mm -hmm. where they have to. That you're mitigating the risk because you're saying you're going to get something back on this. You give us fifty grand, you're going to get twenty. Who's how are you guaranteeing that? So 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 so. Do you have to sell a market somewhere? I mean, like, how do you know you're going to do that? So the fiscal sponsor doesn't have any risk with you. They're providing you the five hundred one C status. Status. Yeah. They're providing you their resources, but they're not necessarily paying into your film. What that does when you get your film with a fiscal sponsor is just an extra, um, it's an extra notch on, on, on your, on your resume that you now have the ability to bring on back to the individual f investor or another group of investors to then have their write off. So they're not donating, let's say $20,000 and it's, and they could lose 20,000. That that when they donate twenty thousand, they'll get at least ten thousand. So the back. fiscal sponsor, all they're doing is providing you with a not for non for profit status. Yeah. Well, or, yes, and their resources yeah. of, of their company. And depending on how big program. they are, their you know the level of prestige. Right. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes they can help you find investors. They can have let's say programs or aspects to finding right. and putting, putting you through. Right. But creative visions or IFP isn't writing you a check. No, 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 they're no. just, no. They're, you're putting their logo on exactly. your, exactly. They're, they're not a grant organization. Right. No. Right. Okay. 
And we should get to grants at one point. We've just yeah. been, we've always found more money through private equity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, most people. Yeah. That's where yeah. But, but if you, if you grow up in places like France or uh, Canada or, um, you know, a lot of European countries, you have tremendous amount of grants. We've just struck out. I mean, not, not struck out, but we've always, we found the process. Ex we've had, we've hired spent money on grant writers mm. we've probably went through three yeah grant writers grant writers and I, I remember again speaking about chris who's this guy that um i had met at a film festival a couple years ago um he had he had said you know if you're gonna spend money try spending money on like a copyright editor because they're they're taking your ideas and they're translating them in a way that can make it more digestible for pitches but like a grant writer it's 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 not anything that you can't do Right. You know, it's just with grants, it's always the waiting too that's really tough sure. because you're 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 hoping that you're going to get that money by the end of the year and all this time you could be shooting something. You could be advancing your film in some way. So it it can be demoralizing in that sense to wait for grants right. to kind of roll around. And and you're looking let's let's take the sidetrack to grants for a second before we get back to sure, the sure. To Stefano and Laura playbook. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so where do you where is it government grants? Is it you know, National Endowment of the Arts. Yeah. Uh, National Endowment of the Humanities. Um, yeah, National Arts Council. National Arts Council. Yeah. Um, what and, else? And like the uh, fiscal sponsor, I would imagine each has its own little Criteria. preference of For what sure. they want. And, For sure. You know, if you got if you want to shoot and you get something out of Canada's government, you got to have shoot in Canada or have Canadian actors or right. you know, or if it's whoever, there's some. Thing they there's a cookie they want yeah so they're the, I would say that they're the most stringent <laughs> yeah. and and probably the most um, bureaucratic and most amount of red tape I would say just uh, demoralizing <laughs> for me I I, I I I know it's not it's well, not us, politically give correct give us an example of 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 the grant process uh, for that do you want to start with telephone yeah. Yeah. Do you do Telefilm Canada? Telefilm yeah, Canada? the timeline God, for I feel we're going to get in trouble. Package. God, I feel... Oh, you, no, Canada just doesn't even... On, pod, on this <laughs> podcast. I mean, we can, we can speak We're going to be in trouble, but let's... It. Okay, talk yeah, about it. Uh, yeah, Telefilm. I'm starting 2017 for Telefilm. April. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just even even the time allotted to, to put into a Telefilm package, you, you have to just, right off the bat, set aside two solid weeks to get it done. Wow. Two to three solid weeks to get it done because they need all sorts of... It's not just as simple as submitting a pitch package. You need... Um, letters, chain of, title. chain of title. You need certain lawyers' letters. Yeah, exactly. And you need all these things notarized, and it's just a very bureaucratic process. Sure. Um, and uh, I mean, beyond that, you know, what, what, we work on a package in like you know March, and it's due by the end of April, and then you hear back when by August. August, right? End of July. End of July. So yeah. it's a, it's a bunch of legal requirements, like you know, chain of title, meaning how who. We want to see you have all the rights for everything for that you're supposed the, to have. For the script yeah. particularly. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. But are there, like I said, are there stipulations that they want? Canadian actors. Canadian, Canadian all cinematographers. Canadian resources. Yeah. Canadian post-production. Yeah. Um, there's a point system in, in, for telefilm, for, mm -hmm. the, for telefilm applications. Mm -hmm. In other words, you, they score you on, on a basis of 10. A quota. So, yep. So you'll get basis and all of them. I mean, they become even more bureaucratic now. So, you know, if you have... Uh, uh, if you have women, it would be a, be a, a big advantage to the, to the, I mean, we can, we can say, I mean, we're half a woman in this team. That's good. Um, That's good. Well, uh, yeah. one whole woman. Yeah. Oh, I'm, exactly. I'm not sure if you're I'm, I'm the other, brain I'm, is feminine, I'm, half I'm, is masculine. Okay. Yeah. I'm half woman right yeah. now. Yeah. We're three, three quarters. Um, and uh, so, so there will be certain gender things that will help. And, and obviously if you're, so that that'll help and then and then obviously nationally if you have um uh, uh canadian cinematographer so the, you get extra points if the writer two points extra if the writer is canadian if the director is canadian it's... Uh, so what what point what's the number you have to hit you 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 want to have like a you want to hit like nine or ten you want to no, hit but, above you have to no, hit but that's above. on each category but i mean do yes you, do you is there like an overall uh point that you're gonna hit like get like 65 to pass oh man yeah it's it's, it's like that it's like that wow. it it's, is and it's just it's nothing it's to do with art and everything to do with bureaucracy sure and and government standards and i think that's the most infuriating thing about all right it, you so know? we're gonna we're gonna give a little bit more example of this but before we do that right 
in this team <laughs> two weeks to do this package of, you know, lawyers' letters. Yeah. Who gets that assignment? Oh, the, both of us. It's all of us. Oh, oh yeah. Like, oh, oh yeah. All right. No compartmentalizing. It's no. all. Right. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. It's a... No, no. We're a real team. I mean, there's yeah. no real... I mean, I kind of believed it. Yeah. But nah, I'll believe it. <laughs> no, but it's, it's not... It's, I mean, it's it's not like anyone like, uh, you know, we, we... I don't... We don't pass it on to somebody else. No, like, no, you know, no, no. We... we and also there's more we should also say i mean give credit like our company has grown absolutely where we have yeah we can delegate some seven, secretarial dele- things you know printouts and stuff like that seven but people that work with and us and the organization of documents but in terms of just getting down to the nitty-gritty and and you know really filling out all those blanks that's you just that's you, you divvy it up you go yeah, right, you take yeah. care of uh you know, make sure you get nine points on that, Stefano, because I got yeah. I gotta take care of this. Okay. I mean, the writing, I mean, I think, I think that, I think, I mean, the calls, the calls, the, the lawyers' letters, yeah. we use our, we use the so lawyers in Canada for our telephone applications, yeah. but you know, we still have to fill out our director's visions. We still have to do our budget breakdowns. We still have all those things to do. And, and we're constantly checking in with each other. Mm-hmm. Does this look messed up? Does this look right? Yeah. How do our numbers what, look? How do our numbers look? Does this add up? Can you, right. like, what, what is this budget? Is it 1.8 million? What do you, like, what do you, what do you, can we, have you, what do you think about this? Like, is this feasible yeah. in these dates, you know? And so did you yeah. learn this on the fly? together we learned it by doing it the doing first time it and failing just over yeah. and over <laughs> yeah literally just yeah there was no time. template for creating your budget oh. sheet and you know oh. and all, and no, you just literally like uh, you just gotta do excel it. Oh, okay yeah you just gotta do it they uh, do i mean they do provide templates for things but you know you just gotta do our it. playbook came from i mean if when someone's watching this i think if if like young or or independent filmmakers are watching this you know there is no we learned through trial and error mm-hmm. okay. and so our baptism our, by fire yeah, our laura and stefano playbook is really from from us through learnt lived experience right right not just only nationally in in, in, the, in the states but also internationally and, yeah. and you know working with different right trying to do films with different producers in different countries and 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 but primarily getting most of our financing right. from the so, states. Yeah. So we're starting to see the picture where the the money for the creative vision is coming from all kinds of rivers of mm-hmm. you know inlets and and, and yeah. channels. Um, so we'll get off grants for a second because that's in, uh, clearly the most bureaucratic, the most difficult paperwork, the most time consuming, and you know yeah. just roll the dice, hope in a few in a few exactly. months you're going to see something and shot in the dark. And, yeah. And then you got to comply with you know yeah what they're going to give you. Um, and let's get back. And then we have the fiscal sponsor who puts the stamp of approval on you, makes you a, a non-for-profit corporation. Right. When you say, and you say brings their resources, what does that mean exactly? Well, they would have, they have programs where they would put you in touch with other producers that have been part of other films or also that they have advertisings for your film on their uh, media outlets or their not just their websites but how they advertise the criteria of what they've selected some of them for example ifp has their own magazine right, right. I, I, filmmaker I, magazine filmmaker magazine okay. right yeah. so they feature a lot of their film makers that are emerging on pro, uh, projects okay and and just like the grants but it's less bureaucratic they ask us for for production reports yeah where are you stefano in yeah what in, are you doing you know where are you guys yeah are, exactly how is principal many, photography wrapped yeah. like you know yeah how many more days do you have on principal photography what are your what are your, what's your fundraising strategy like all that stuff yeah so. so that that requires but it's much easier i mean god i mean as someone who's canadian and american like <laughs> i much rather enjoy the freedom of the american system because yeah there's less money in the american system in terms of because you you know in terms of grants so you need to find a lot more private funding yeah but the freedom sure is way better right. because you have people who will like your project and be like okay go shoot it like just like you know this is the requirements that i want you know and don't don't destroy the trust that i'm giving you in this relationship okay right. all right so let's right. get to that because this is the this is the hard part <laughs> So you're applying for grants. You're waiting to see how they come through. That that's going to carry its own stuff. Yeah. You've got uh, your your not for profit status. You're you're attached to IFP or Creative Vision or some. Uh, uh, um, what's the term again? 
uh, fiscal sponsor, fiscal sponsor yeah. who's who's adding prestige and providing shelter for investors. Yes, correct. You got the initial Indiegogo or whatever, a few thousand dollars here or there. Hopefully, it's more than that. Yeah, that you can get started doing something maybe. Mm -hmm. But now you got to get the money, money. Right, mm -hmm. right, the big money. Okay, mm -hmm. you got it all. Grants are in the right. process. Right. You got this fiscal. Hello, yeah, yeah, listen, I'm with IFP. Does that help you? Like, yeah. where are you getting this money? Okay. Who's, who's giving you this good. money? This yeah, is good. Good. This is good. This is what we talked about in the car. <laughs> this is what we talked about in the car. Uh, do you want to go first? <laughs> Stefan always comes in strong, man. I think, I think, well, I think one, one line of attack. I think, well, one line of attack. I think, I think one thing, too, that always helps is, um, again, like, I know it sounds like a cliche in some ways, but really going back to other projects that you've worked on mm -hmm. and and to see if you have a pre-existing relationship with an investor okay because you've already in some capacity have built that baseline level of trust it's like you know my work right. um you you've heard me talk about it maybe you've seen some of it and you know so that's one aspect of it but then once once they kind of um once you get them interested or, or curious about a project really being transparent with why they're interested in being on your project. I think it gives them a sense of ownership in some way. But how did you, how did we find those initial yeah, investors, I mean, right? Yeah. So yeah. like, so, so like, I think we found some of our guy, some of the people from like, if you're an actor on a film, mm -hmm. so I, I would recommend this number one. Yeah. If you're an actor on a film, any film, any even meet your producers. Absolutely. You should not be doing any single film if you do not know yeah. who the producers are. Like when you and I did the movie Animal, mm -hmm. I know who our producers are. I knew I went out for dinner with with Jonathan. I went out mm -hmm. for dinner with Dylan and to see who uh Dylan was getting money from and who Kelly was getting money from. Right. I I spent the time to meet those producers. I was always curious about why are these people investing money? Because many things get produced. Commercials right. get produced. Films get funded. And there's a lot of independent films that get funded. So you, I would start off at that. So where do you find them? If you're an actor, go through your list of the people and befriend you hopefully you do a good job as an actor, but, and then, and they, well, yeah. So they sort of, and, they like, yeah. and they like you and they say, Hey, you know, yeah. you know what, Russ, I saw you in that movie. You were great. You were great in animal, you know, let's, uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you for, for, um, for, uh, for coffee mm -hmm. at grand central. There's a producer that we have on a film that's, we're getting our finishing funds that took me two years yeah. just to convince. I mean, he was, traveling from Westchester and ha was only in the city a little a couple times I would get him for maybe 40 minutes at Grand Central Station at a time, at a time. Yeah. and I think we were doing this for a long time this dance back and forth showing him a package talking about the project it takes you know there is no substitute for the legwork relationship building. The, the relationship yeah. building is so important it's so and it's a lot easier i think than sailing than s sales than selling it because y if you have some protection if you have a fiscal sponsor then you can start to talk about what to do in those relationships mm -hmm. i think that two of the, of the main problems independent filmmakers have number one is where do you find the producers but then when they find them they have no idea what to talk about right. yeah they they right. don't have the content for what takes place in the the conversation yeah because the, my question is you know uh when you for all of these things from grants to Indiegogo mm -hmm. to everything, and now to the actual investor who's going to write a check. Mm -hmm. What's in it for you, buddy? Yeah. Right. First of all, we all know this movie ain't going to make any money. Most of them don't. Yeah. Uh, you're, you'd be lucky. So, is it the experience? What do you? Is it? I mean, I always thought it's like what I need is I need the guy who instead of buying his third Ferrari that year, always wanted to go to a movie premiere. Right. Right. And doesn't know how to do that. And right. I'll, I'll make that happen for you, pal. Just yeah. So, so when you're looking for these people, there's there's a cookie they want. There's yeah. what's in it for them other than a, a write off of you know however much money in tax time. I mean, so you have to 
know why you're doing it, I would think, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. If you know why you're doing the thing and, yeah. it's, and it's a passion and you can explain that with passion, how do you make it for them? I, so, so <laughs> well, you just handed that right brain. off. The do, you, do you want it? No, no, because uh, I think you're on a roll here with like, you know, you had mentioned, or Russ had actually mentioned earlier about, um, you know, certain types of producers or Stefano had mentioned it, how maybe it's not someone who is in the artistic field. Maybe it is someone who does most work. Most of the time they're not. Yeah, yeah, more in a business field. And they are and they are really curious about the filmmaking process. But I think you were onto something, so I'll let you. You know, the there are some 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 topics that you can really talk about. Number one, do they have people in their family that want to be cast in the film? That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. It's it's often come up in our in our circumstances where there are people that want to be in a film. And so there are certain uh, certain compromises that you should try <laughs> as a team to make we've made uh several several compromises over the years uh, yeah, I, uh, I that. I and 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 that's that's uh that's part of that's part of the conversation so yeah. so let's say so okay so so person a wants to go to premiere sure they okay? want they want the the they want the prestige. The exactly. They want the tickets exactly. to Cannes. They want they the matinee. Want the That's right. 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 So we've already we've had many of yeah. those. We've had the tickets with our company to Cannes. We've brought many the people to Cannes. To passes to Cannes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first one. The second one has a nephew or a niece who's trying to break into acting. Mm. And by the way, I should preface this by saying this is this is like illegal, right? This I mean, this is, is not. This is hypothetical. Well, this, <laughs> this is actually this is an as if. No, it, yeah, it this, is, actually this is a Meisner as we're if. Just, we're just literally we're spitballing ideas. But, that's right. That's but, right. You know, if one were, if, were. if one were, <laughs> one. if somebody had a niece, right? You have a niece, and <laughs> who was had the going ambition to, to be say in film. potentially that they wanted to be in a in a in a scene, you would very openly negotiate mm. w- how big the scene would be what the role would be <laughs> and how much money that would uh it would take to, to, to make it what? happen this has turned yeah. a lot sleazier than i had <laughs> i had even dreamed it would i mean i had secret dreams that it would get weird but now it's really weird so i'm psyched about that i'm well, psyched that you dove right down into <laughs> we are uh, yeah. we didn't get here by accident no, you know no. we really didn't yeah we didn't get here by accident it's a lot of it's trial and error a yeah. lot of it is just you know finding ways to to be resourceful now let me know? ask you this about building relationships mm. because i i worked with a, another client who had a, a fantastic pr folks and they they had this great sort of lesson on how to uh um, attain media connection, but but you could apply it to really anything. And that mm-hmm. was they would create this like, top twenty list, and you'd just say, okay, I need X in my life. I need yep. this to help me. Yeah. Column A is the twenty people who I think, who I know in my life, who could or might help me. Mm-hmm. And they might, they might be somebody I met half a second. They right. might be somebody I never met or I know through somebody else. Yeah. Right up to your mom or dad or something. Mm. And you'd rank them sort of like one to ten. The next column is how likely are they able, would they be willing to help me? Yeah. And how much effect would they have if they helped me? Right. Mm. So, you know, mom most likely would help you ten out of ten, but the effect would be one. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. And so you build this list and you just brainstorm like whoever I know even if it's a far reach, whatever connection, I, and then you just tally up the points and whoever is, and you start with, and you just call them one a day for 20 days or one a day for 20, for, you know, and you're just breaking it down like that, which I thought was a very interesting way. Yeah. To, it's effective. It's very effective, effective way to do it. So if you're looking for that independent angel investor person, do you do something similar like that? Do you sit down together and go, oh, Where's this money coming? Who who's got a niece? Who's who's got a boat that they're selling that they want to be in the movie? Like, do you ha- you have a list of people in your mind? Yes, definitely. Yes, and yeah. Is that what you would tell people to do? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so it, yes, with one caveat. Okay. One caveat. Laura and I, through our Laura and Stefano playbook, <laughs> would never, never find all the financing through one person no sure because what ends up happening is the relationship sours absolutely we've been on many yeah 
So no, no, yeah, yeah. we, yeah, you, you don't want to become too dependent on one source. Um, that's why we tend to go the, the microfinancing route gotcha. where we'll tap into different resources because it's less risk. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you don't want to be in a situation where you're asking for, you know, $50,000 for a project and then it, you overburden and you over cripple that one resource as opposed to just kind of spreading yourself out a little bit right. and, and uh, microfinancing. So we would it's have, effective. so we would have, let's say, instead of one producer, giving us a hundred thousand yeah we'd rather have five producers giving us twenty thousand right right so the risk right. is less that's right they tend to be less demanding but you the the only the only caveat is that you have to be people uh, thank god we're, we're we're a team of not just the two of us but also seven th yeah. five other people that manage everyone expectations well and so you're trying to everyone has wants something different yeah yes so but yeah. i would rather deal with five people whose risk is low than uh, one person who could derail the entire film also i mean creatively because you know, you want at the end of the day, if, if you're doing a film to have final cut, you want yeah, to be absolutely. able to be able to cut it the way that you want, absolutely. but you yeah. also have to be receptive as we were when we were just in, in, in Miami to showing cuts and it's brutal to show a, an investor, yeah. you know, I, I, she handles meetings way better than I do. I, I can't even watch sometimes when we're in those rooms, you know, because <laughs> it's tough because they're also seeing a product that's not finished. Yeah. They're, they're seeing something in flux. They're, they're not seeing something that's color corrected or and, sound mixed. And or, like you said, if they're not in that world, right, it's right. like, that doesn't look what like the a This isn't how I imagined it. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's all right. So, so, nerve -wracking, so but. making lists in your mind of where this money's coming from, yeah. mm -hmm. um, having the 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 backing of your uh financial sponsor and that the, the sort of shelter of that and 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 the legitimacy of that to approach them with yeah um i mean typically you know for, forget short films you're making a feature film yeah mm. you know this is a major amount of major money. Oh, yeah. major financing oh yeah i mean you can do one f you know for nothing you can do one for you know uh, 50 grand or something but if you want to do one you know even the micro micro yeah. world is you know 2.5 or 1.8 or you know or or 300 grand even if you want to really trim things down right yeah especially you guys are uh i mean you've done both narrative and documentary, and documentary. so yeah there's two different things going on there the documentary is a lot more logistically uh difficult and the narrative is who are you going to get attached to who are you going to put in it yeah. or, you know who's so what that's where, where are you getting that money where are these independent filmmakers where's on the on your list or is that just like hey you know build up a life and then you know build up some relationships and hopefully in 15 years you'll find that money so so i i what i'm hearing is a great question inside the yeah. question yeah. right a, 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 sh a shell like a shell in the nuts i don't know like a nut in the shell I'm, i've I'm, been called that yeah it's it's, it's delicious <laughs> yeah uh, does it call that too delicious question <laughs> russ called that too. handsome yeah, man gotta be, gotta be honest. um so you got a great asmr voice it's a very npr moment yeah um, you're gonna sell us both off on Indiegogo. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're the first one for a thousand dollars. I'll be the litmus test. I'll be feel, the guinea pig. I feel like get another thousand out out of this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, is that I would not wait to shoot a feature until you get all your money. I would uh, now. Just get there's going. a lot of people who would disagree with this, but uh, I would never spend. I don't know if there's ever going to be a perfect time. So what I would do is if you raise 10 to 20,000, 10 to 15,000, I would start shooting oh, yeah. whatever is feasible, whatever can be used as a pilot, as a pitch project, as a, as a teaser, as a placeholder to show yeah. what you're capable of. And fast forward... I would never shoot it just as a pitch. I would shoot it to use it in the in inside the, in the, the cut. Yeah. every thing that we've everything that we've ever shot for uh, for for our feature in the early days when we first started. We've always used our footage. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we would never we would never shoot something that then you know afterwards was was unusable. Now, some people just don't. I mean, they they would be like like how do you like you yeah. Well, they'd, they'd be turned off probably by the idea of say it's going to take three or four years to film something. They'd be turned off by the idea of using footage from like 2016 that. You right. know, people's looks change right, if they need sure, continuity sure. shots and all that stuff. Their style changes just by virtue of being a filmmaker. Like, right. um, so that's where their hesitance would come from. But yeah, he, we we always so the basic idea everything. is is get that first few nickels and dimes together mm. and get to work. Oh yeah, and things build momentum because now you have legitimacy behind the camera and in front of the camera you have something to show say well this is where we're at yeah yeah um yeah and all right okay all right you 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 want to create an environment of success around you you want to create an environment where many people are believing in you and have mm -hmm. have you have like as you're going down the list there's a lot of check marks right. and so, so when you so when you first start there are very little check marks you know there's there's so the the there are so many people who have ideas to do things that are sketches but as you get further further into the the extra miles more and more check marks accumulate and more and more people will take notice and ironically when you're at the end which is when you need the money probably less is when it's much easier to be in those meetings first of all you're less paranoid you're 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 more at ease you have a you have you know let's say even 20 30 percent of the film shot you've 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 got some momentum you've got options from right. different pr uh, uh, producers if things don't work out you move on to another producer you don't have the same paranoia and the same level of of of, of uh, stress on yourself and again being two helps a lot yeah why well because i don't know i i because i think i think it's always like it's based on what you always say about certain types of people will like gradually or like naturally gravitate to you in certain circumstances and then it's like the opposite for me you know and and we're essentially one brain that's a great point yeah that expl explain that i mean i i understand what you mean but i'm not sure if, if the audience would... no but <laughs> that's a great point yeah like uh you know, some people don't like. I me. hate Stefano. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Right. That's why that's right. I was some, necessary. The only in reason this I interview. did this is that you know, she would come. Exactly. I was some, the bait. No, no. Some <laughs> producers, believe it or not, I don't think do this. not get along with me. That's they a would shock. They I would just find me so controlling. It's hard to, hard to <laughs> deal with. Uncompromising. A perfectionist. How they, dare he? Right. But, but, but they'll, let me but, ask you this question. Just <laughs> off on the tangent. Yeah. We'll go right back to that. But I just want to know what your policy of lateness is on the set. Uh, what is your policy of being I just, uh, I'm, I'm just, just curious. Low tolerance. Low tolerance. None. You know why, too? Because it's yeah. like... Mine? We, yeah. Mine's usually pretty good, <laughs> as you noticed. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that out there. You know why, too? Because we always choose to shoot a little bit longer for our shoots. Oh, right. <laughs> so we need to utilize everything that's available. All right. So, but, so, um, all right. so people don't like Stephanie. So. <laughs> and some people don't like me. I think it's just... You know what? I... How do you Something know that? to do with ah, you can I tell. I can tell. Like you can tell. Our job is to read human our behavior, our, yeah. And you you can tell when a shift occurs, like w when when we're both in the same room. You know, like mm. maybe if things get a little too intense on Stefano's end, or he's he's really trying to drive yeah. a point home. I'll always support him a hundred percent, but sometimes I'm there to like. Do you guys have like baseball bit. signs? Like you're like. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I, mean, I mean, I, I, oh yeah, it's like a glance across. It's a the glance room across the room. You know, like a like a look. You know, like a it's a look. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very Italian. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I just think I think it's a it's an energy thing, you know. Um, I think having a complementary energies just kind of evens things out a little bit. All right. Yeah. Okay. All Builds right. Builds a more convincing argument for you. certain things. All right. So I mean, I can honestly say there's no way that I I, I cannot imagine having to finish a feature on my own. If Laura wasn't involved, and and I don't oh, I don't yeah, I don't mean yeah. that I, I don't I just, feel the same way, but I just don't mean that on a on a creative practical sense. I mean that in a sense of like financially of the people that we've attracted, because we've both brought in different people, right? And certain people really, uh, certain certain investors have really liked being around her, and you know it's 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 smoothed out the edges for certain parts. Yeah. Right. So. All it's, right, so I got so yeah. I got a couple more questions on investors. So, mm. 
because everybody wants something different, we started on the whole yeah. metaphor, you know, uh, hypothetical yeah. Yeah. Uh, niece nephew situation, which yeah. never actually happened. No, yeah. never. But, you know, there are also companies, by the way, that do this. It's completely so hypothetical. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's illegal. You know, it's it completely, it's the, hypothetical. The United States government tried it uh, for a little while. Did they? We got rid of that. Yeah. But, but they did try it. It's a nepotism <laughs> thing. It didn't work out well. But, um, <laughs> but it's, what do you, you can't promise in, yeah. in the film world. So what are you telling these people who are, who have the checkbook? Is it just, is it just, wow, this is such the great, I mean, no one's going to be as passionate about your story right. as you that's are. Right. They're not, yeah. well, that's, a, that's awesome. I love, <laughs> it's a great idea. It's, I would probably watch it, but why am I writing this? Like, what am I getting out of this? So for, for us now, for us, it's different than when we first started, but for us now it's distribution. For us now, it's that yeah. we have we have usually sales agents attached to a film, and so right from the get go. Well, not from the get go, but but usually earlier when we're, on, earlier on, earlier even, on, yeah. in principal photography, yeah, even yeah. before post, and yeah. so and that that creates a lot of ease. Well, because they know the worst thing is that a project that you're going to pay for is going to be shelved and yeah. never seen. Right. So yeah. like. The, the thing is, like, at this point in our career, basically since The Girl Who Cannot Speak that was on NBC, you know, you've had a film on NBC, you have a film on Tubi, right, which is owned by, by Lionsgate yeah. and Fox. So you've had, a f you've had films that have been distributed, right? right? Just a, a little bit more than... All right. So the, right. So the cookie yeah. is, right. you're going to see it. That's right. You're it's gonna, gonna see it. It's you're not gonna, gonna be collecting dust on, on a shelf. And you're going to see it. Right. 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 All right. I'm still... I don't know, man. Uh, my kids put this stuff on YouTube. I can put that on TV too. I'm not, like, like it's it's distribution. It's it's the legitimacy of being seen mm -hmm. on television uh, or in the theater somewhere. Your your name is going to be in light somewhere. So a, a prestige cookie, I guess. But is there a fine? Is there a thing like? Your money's coming back a well, little. They, we might make well, it. I don't in, know. In, in, in perpetuity, they would own. I mean, we don't own all our films no. uh, right. in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. I, sorry, we do a, a percentage of it in perpetuity. Right, right. We don't but own not 100%. our company. First of all, it's always a deal between the company and the individual investor. So it's always broken yeah. out. So like Rosso Films would own, let's say, a Dream Beyond the Dark or and, and a percentage of it. And then a certain percentage, especially our feature, is just like broken up into. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the sales agent is a yeah. chunk of it. The, right. That's right. The you know, that's you know right. our sales uh, yeah, so there's yeah, we have we have um so it's it's divided into different ways but but I think I kind of know what part of the question is is that is that they're usually looking to have an imprint a creative imprint. And if you can tell the DNA of that person of what they mm -hmm. really want, you'll have a much better relationship because if if they want in, if they want impact or insight or cre a lot of people want creative say in the direction of the film, that's why we go to Miami. I mean, we technically in our contracts, no, but uh, hold on. Wait, 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 no. time out. That's why we go to Miami. No, no, no. We were just in Miami to show <laughs> two to show investors footage. Yeah. footage. To show footage, yeah. No. We were just in Miami to show two investors. <laughs> that's at footage. the end of the playbook. I was gonna yeah. say, what's up with that? <laughs> that's in the that's in the, <laughs> in the postscript. That's in the this is yeah. why we go to Vegas. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's but, right. Yeah. <laughs> so but we um we 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 even though we have final cut, we're not the type of directors that um that's a that's a nuclear bomb option. You should. I, I, first of all, I never. I I tr I mean, I know that I I'm <clears throat> I I put a tough face on at the beginning. I like to have the conflict in the beginning of the relationship <laughs> yeah. because because I because it, it lets us be clear Just and I, I have the guardrails. All the differences I have, right a, away. I have the guardrails really yeah. really set because I know I'm going to lose lots of battles in the end. Right. So I might as well I might sure. as well just set up the this, this, yeah. the 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 relationship in that way mm -hmm. in the beginning. Right. But um, but we don't ever pull the 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 that we have final cut card because that, that's a yeah you'll you'll it have it but you'll, des bomb. you'll yeah. destroy the relationship yeah, yeah. so when we go to show footage mm -hmm. we're asking them what do you think right yeah what do you think how can this be solved what do you think yeah what is your opinion on this do you want to change this do you want to change this right i think that you have a, a unique situation where you have directors that are pretty flexible in that way yeah so the ethos of that All helps right. so it's so what i'm hearing is that it, especially the folks you're working with that are investing in your pieces 
is there's a there's a creative input there's a uh, uh the glamour of being the executive producer of xyz and having your name on you know amazon prime or whatever and and your kids can watch it <clears throat> but is there ever just the, do we ever run into the investors who are just like how i want i gave you 80 grand am i getting it back you should never, in an independent film situation, say so they're getting it back because they're not. Well, you can, you, should, you should invest <laughs> in the S and P five hundred. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. no, that's I mean, right with that money. You yeah, should, I mean, you should open yeah. up a four hundred one k or a Roth IRA. Right. I mean, if it's you're if you're looking back for if risky. you're looking for returns, mm. okay, you don't even know. I mean, Patty Jenkins is Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four lost money. Right. So th that as a pure investment play is not for people but most of the time that i felt that i've met people most of the people who are investing in films are not the, in it for that reason well that's not the primary source of investing money yeah because right. films are not like i said it's got to be the the boat i didn't get it's got to be the yeah the right. pleasure thing yeah right i'm gonna have, get pleasure out of Wanting this right. to be a part Some of something way. and making a creative imprint okay yeah yeah and those are very specific types of people yeah right yeah and, and that's why it is so essential to watch footage with them because then they know where their money's going they're like oh so this right. is what you've been up but to this is my question though yeah as we're building lists because we're all looking to find the money right these are specific types of people the right. ones who have what they call disposable income who want to spend it on the creative world rather than you know plastic surgery or whatever mm, sure you know, they, they have a, a, a money that they want to put towards something where they can say i'm an executive producer mm. on x y i'm uh whatever I, uh, my movie is going to be on this i lost all of that money i never never going to see it again but look at that i went to can look at that yeah but also where, you wouldn't lose all your money you, because if you'd be on a 501c3 right. there'd be and, you, right. and you'd have a, a fiscal sponsor you'd actually recoup back half that's right okay so so, right, so, so i'm gonna lose half my money but I'm gonna get but this. Half of what? I'm let's gonna, say it's exactly. I mean, so so let's say you're spending ten thousand dollars on plastic surgery. If your investment is twenty thousand, you're getting ten back on taxes. That's right. So the ten thousand is left in the film. You're not worrying about that. And the less risk that you have on each individual investor, the better the relationship thrives. So spreading yeah. out the risk. Spread oh, it yeah. out. Spread it out. At a very specific type of mindset, yes. a creative mindset that yes. wants to be involved in filmmaking. Yes. Absolutely. Where do you make those lists? That's right. Where? Or through through literally everybody everybody everybody, everybody, no. we've everybody. ever yeah. come across yep. everybody and every I, contact every business card everything and I would also say that sometimes there there's never been a situation where we haven't been surprised where someone who is an activist or for let's say the day I had to grow up which is an activist documentary. Mm -hmm from france who's doing a phd will send us 500 euros because they're doing uh a, a, an act they're, yeah. they're they're you know for laura for example yeah i exactly. think of laura in france right you know who who are just like this is where i'd spend my money because i care about yeah what you're doing gotcha. this if is you my have line of interest yeah. and this is the other thing also like i just want to say that as a director as, as, as filmmakers that are trying to put together projects that have specific issues if your ideas and you're extremely passionate about not just passionate but if you feel that there's a there's an, a specific niche of what you're working towards people can say this is what is i've been wanting to invest my money in and this is the thing whereas if it's more general mm -hmm. if it's if it's if it's um a, a more theme type film i'm not saying anything about science fiction sure. or, or 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 horror films right. um I've found that case not to be the case, mm. not not to be so so uh, emotionally attached in that way. Yeah, and I mean th those particular genres, you're doing it because you know, you, you, for the most part, those are the ones that are going to make a little back because they have a built-in right. sort of. You don't even have to have a star in those things. Right. Yeah, they have a especially family. horror films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, built and, in. and we should yeah. talk a little, and we should say. I mean, you can say this. Anybody can say this in this room, but but you know, horror films financially as returns oh, yeah. are the best are returns. the best absolutely they're, they're the best, best because yeah. they, they can it's it's always Huge been statistically yeah. 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 yeah so if you're trying to get an investor to get money yeah. um and they're just looking for return they're not connected you know to that horror films, horror are, films are the way to go i would say yeah. they're the number yeah. one and choice and, and yeah. e usually easiest Absolutely. to shoot yeah <laughs> yeah i mean 
<laughs> don't need yeah. a name attached. You yeah. do it in a cabin no, no, it's true. in all one location. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Like, yeah. head get chopped off. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. And, they're exactly. F- and they're fun. I mean, the Absolutely. actors yeah. have a good time. Yeah. The directors have a good time. We yeah. know people. I mean, Sean loves them. You yeah. get people who really love, it's an art form. And when you get people that really love yeah, that job, they, they, can, they can really thrive in an environment like that. Yeah. All right. So an investor. All right. So I'm getting the picture now of the playbook <clears throat> but i i want to get specific in and again you don't have to uh give ex- actual examples but that phone call that email mm. out of the blue it's like okay got our list got our we're, we're ready to go i gotta ask for some money yeah what's the first line what's the we want you to be an investor on the phone listen i'm, I'm i got a project I, i'm thinking <laughs> of you as we want you to be an investor produ- on the I film. I want you to be an investor on the film. Yeah. 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 I want you to be an investor on the film. I think yeah. you can help us. I, yeah. I think you can help us, and I also think you can bring something. Yeah. You can also bring something that maybe we haven't seen to the project. No, I know that right. you like, I, for example, I know that you like our first investor all time, all time, George, uh, from, from the MoMA. I know that you love modern art and you love abstract art. This whole film mm-hmm. is about abstract art. Right. Okay. This whole film. Touch on that we've, sensibility. We've commissioned an artist to do a, a figurative drawing of, of, of a woman where I'm, th- I'm, I'm shooting with, with smoke and in this, in this dimly lit room, it's a, it's a montage piece. The, I, this is going to be like the times that you spend, that we see each other at mm-hmm. the, at the MoMA theater in the basement at, at, uh, at the museum. So what you're doing there again is providing a solution for them. It's not like I need this from you. No, I can give you this. Right. Yeah. Right. This is what I'm going to give you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We and want it, you inv- involved with us. And, and the, the, we've all our investors, I think we've had good relationships with. Right. We'd never, I mean, we've seen many people burn bridges that we, that we know yeah. because of, because of, of money. We keep yeah. our investors close. I mean, we try to work yeah as a family as much as we can that's right and really starting with the relationship not the objective of money yeah you know i think that's a that's a kind of a cart before the horse situation that i think a lot of people they jump the gun and they just make it about the money right away right, right. yeah so like you gotta you gotta spend time with that person you have to meet with them in person and right. you know talk do you what do you do have you run into the situation where you're where there's not any there's not an obvious thing you can give them back like like the like the example of the moma guy where it's you know he loves this particular George, subject yeah. mm. you're doing something on that subject you're going to be involved in promoting this that's you're you're, you're giving him a gift there mm-hmm. but where it's there's some money there to get but i i don't know that he's even interested in this idea or this isn't a topic that this person would like what's the is it then you know we've gone to can we've done we, is it then sort of the uh, third party endorsement of what you've done or like how what yeah. else can you we think about no, Jack, think- let's think about Jackie mm. yeah right we go to so let, let's 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 dissect the situation right, right right how many times have we failed in our in our well how many like yeah. so 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 we so let's say we talk to Jackie okay she's ha- has invested on another film mm-hmm. we bring involved this is a very artistic film sometimes it doesn't work out yeah right, right. so yeah. I mean sometimes and they even with the can card sing. and the NBC card, it's like sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes yeah. you use the NBC card. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you use the 2B card. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, the can, you know, what, whatever it is, the awards, the distribution, the sales agent. For whatever reason, it's just they, not a good fit. Yeah. It's not a good fit. Right. And you yeah. move, you, you, you pick up and you move on to the next town. Right. I mean, you, you, you. But aside from personal mm. uh, folk where, where this is a subject matter or this is a story that speaks to this investor, when it's just. We're making a movie. Yeah. I don't know that you even, but I know you'd love to be part of this. Then it becomes part of like your resume. Mm. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. The, that's yes. the pitch. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. This yes. is where we've been. This that's is right. Yeah. Okay. That's the, that's, that's, right. that's the default. Yeah. Okay. I, I would say, I would start, I would say that that's the second thing if you're out of the, of the relationship, emotional contact, right? right. Cause, cause that's the emotional contact and the relationship is better than your resume. Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, some people don't do that. Some people <laughs> want to show you their right resume the right bat. away. Yeah. But I, you know, Laura and I are, are um, we're not that stuck up. 
you know, no, but we're also in the field of building relationships yeah. too with long term relationships. We're interested in with people. people. That's you right. Know, we're interested in people. That's right. So, so you, you kind of you have to have a good nose for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I I like I'm I always want to know when someone gets involved, what do they want? Yeah. What like what? Yeah. Like, what can this film? If we shoot a feature film that's about a blind painter. What do you want? Right. Do you like, and this goes back to the issue of, you know, hypothetically, do you have a niece who's an actress (laughs) or or do you have a a kid who's starting off? What, what is it that you really, Yeah. what do you, and like, think about it, you know, let's meet in two weeks. Is there something that you want? Is there something, is there a part of a story? There's so many people that I meet that have stories that are, are untold or something reminds them of something when they were younger or this was about. You know, so trying to understand that I think is really mm. powerful. All right, so let's 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 circle back and summarize to where we're at yeah. so yeah. far. Yeah, yeah, because this is a real good map of uh, uh, of doing it, and maybe we can we'll we'll you give me specific stuff that I can drop in to the notes and whatnot, like yeah. examples yeah. of yeah. dialogue yeah. and stuff. So you have your story, you have your script, you're ready to go. You you then go to the process of crowdfunding yes mm-hmm. to try and get some money to yes. say we got some money and you're going to spend right. that money out of your own pocket you're going to yeah, yeah to create a, a pitch right. to create yeah. a trailer right. to get some crowdfunding yeah. from your your smaller circle yes then you're going to do maybe grant applications if it's applicable if that's where you want to go if you want to do that and and specific grants in specific categories are, are for specific right. things right um social docs or narrative features we'll or... talk about where to look for that in a second right. because that's the resource is important yeah, yeah. where to find this stuff. yeah and then the um, again, I'm blanking on the term fiscal sponsor, fiscal sponsor, sponsor. to get the 501c3 non for profit yes, thing, sir. and that's the IFPs, the creative visions, exactly. And yeah. That gives you some cachet, some gravitas, some uh, uh, a company attached, yeah. totally right, giving you and a, tax, a tax shelter, tax basically. shelter, and mitigating yeah. the risk. So, and two things the risk. that's so right. You're, you're basically getting that, that prestige, and you're also mitigating the risk mitigating for the individual for investor. Right. Now, right. it's a matter of building using your relationships build that list maybe it's that list we talked about where you're like let's who can help me where's the money coming from approaching the investor i want you to be approached approaching that investor with the idea that i'm giving this to you i have something for you correct this is what i can this is what how it's going to be great for you and i'm interested in what you want yeah yeah i'm I'm interested i'm I'm really interested in what you you get involved in this what do you want yeah what do you what are you you hoping to get from this what what do you want yeah. yeah. Aside from dinner with him. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, because that's, that's right. probably, it's probably. Because that's good, you know, but. Yeah. Well, I've had dinner with what him. What else? It's, it's kind of weird sometimes. But... <laughs> so, all right. So it was intense. <laughs> it's very intense. <laughs> so now, have I, have I summarized it? Pretty, it's pretty good. Have I got the, the pathway? You've done yeah. really well. Definitely. Really, really well. And, and, and I think, I think what you've done really well in, in, in the audience that's going to watch this is you've really cracked open the nitty gritty oh, of, nuts and bolts, yeah. of, of how to find and what the process is for the biggest part, which right. is the money that comes from the individual investor. And so I would just summarize by saying, break out that risk on the risk curve, not, not only just having the 501c3, but also Breaking, S- spread, spread it out, it out micro, spread it, spread micro it out because, yeah. because our, even our, our features that don't cost a tremendous amount of money, they're over 300,000, right? right? So yeah. that's got to have, we have like 10 producers <laughs> right. on, right. on this film, right? We don't have one producer or right. two producers. Right. So that's, that's the, that's, so you're spreading out that risk again, right. spreading out that risk from other people and you're, you're getting into the content of the conversation when you do find a potential person into what you guys are going to discuss in right. that relationship. Right. right what you want okay so yeah all right can i say one other yeah, thing absolutely yeah. i just want to say one last thing this is also you know hypothetical kind of illegal some um <laughs> there are there's i just want to say this to some filmmakers there are some companies that will specifically give you money for actors they have a roster of actors now this is this is you know, i've heard this happens it's illegal um but they, they because casting directors uh, get paid usually from the filmmaker but there are some production companies that have actors that have pay into sort of a, a, a monthly plan or subscription plan mm. and those people uh, will sometimes offer them a guaranteed uh, casting or some kind of guaranteed casting so 
what happens is, is that the person, so the company that has guaranteed this to, to the this person actor, who's, right. who's, who's, who's been paying a subscription yeah. or multiple people will hold auditions. And those auditions are legitimate because they're, uh, they're, they're, um, with the filmmakers who then give you sides, sides from, let's say, particularly one's film or let's say our film. And you would pick, uh, people let's say you narrow down from five people that they would that that they have in their top five which ones that you would take but all of them would have been part of that subscription process so once you take on those actors they would um they would uh they would financially that company's paying for correct them to, that's right for you to take them on because they've, right. they've promised them casting, uh, again so. we're not talking hypothetically hypothetical and we're also not talking no crazy amounts of money no right. we're talking in the no, same no, amount no. that you would make in a kickstarter i've never heard that's right i mean i mean interesting this would be something this would be you know the, the, in, in the upwards of twenty five hundred. right right two thousand yeah. dollars yeah that's fascinating i never yeah. heard that yeah. yeah all right so um all right let me just uh, get my covid brain together here for a second uh, only works by the way though russ uh, just to say because we do documentaries this only works for narrative for narratives yeah. that's this it. would never work it would for dogs. be tough for yeah. actors to be, in so to be cast right. in a documentary unless you're doing yeah. some unless you're, reenactments yeah. and exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless you're really lying you know <laughs> which yeah, yeah exactly voiceover crap yeah. voiceover, right right which, which i can do yeah uh, for you. <laughs> uh so all right so before we get first of all I line that out there as to the sort of process. Is there anything else beyond yes. that? Yes. Okay, so let's go beyond that because then at the very finish, I want you to just, we want to rattle off some, we want to go back and rattle off, okay, uh, financial sponsor, uh, uh, grants, look in these places. Look in these places, right? gotcha. But, but okay. So now yeah. we've, we've gotten the investor. Right. We've got our list together. People are right. maybe writing checks and we're ready to go. What's up? Yeah. A bonus bonus round, I would say, <laughs> I would say commission pieces. So there's been places where oh, we have yeah. been commissioned yeah. by writers or individuals who have a piece that has been written and like you as a film director, okay. but have never developed the project. So you're brought on financially in the development That's stage, right. but also with a contract to finish that piece. Yeah. This would be a small development project, maybe you know five to seven thousand dollars, and you would be developing, let's say, uh, a short film or a pilot right. or a pitch package. Uh, that's different though, because that's I mean. You're, it's not you're your hot you're, you're it's a job it's a it's job, job. Okay. it's a yeah, job exactly. it's a job but it's exactly but but again we're talking i mean for us who who are workaholics who love to yeah i uh, really love to work um i love those pieces okay right. I, I love to do i like to do those pieces yeah because yeah um all right i'll write one yeah before you leave and we'll yeah <laughs> I'll hire you well, they, just... they, they flex your muscles <laughs> they i mean do, they really they flex do. your muscles in the, in the kind of the limitations that you you're gonna whatever you have with a yeah. budget and yeah and working on someone else's stuff you still have a creative vision because right you're doing the you're doing the, the shot lists anyway right. Okay. right and you're putting together your team right right yeah so all right so beyond where we left off what's what what's the next phase of that of the uh you got your investors and you've uh, you've worked out the deals as to what points they're getting what titles they're getting what they're getting back what they're getting out of it and they're in for a penny and for a pound on the whole thing and, mm -hmm. and now you're ready to go is there another part of the playbook that uh, that we need to get to or make sure we... you finish the film yeah make sure you finish the film <laughs> no, that's make sure right. you finish the film yeah yeah make sure you finish it right yeah. that's the, there's nothing worse than not keeping oh god not no, it's terrible it's the worst yeah. thing now here's a question i have for yeah. you um because this is the mistake on some of the films that I made. Because it's, it's funny you mentioned too, because I I hadn't heard of it yeah. until I saw the, I'm I'm the uh, chief uh, bottle washer, president of the two LLCs for the last two Fred Carpenter films. Right, right, yeah. right. So I I made those deals with Multicom and, and the distribution company, and sales agents, and all that stuff. So I I have to get all this stuff. So I saw the breakdown of where they're selling it, you know, and where and I'm like, what the fuck is Tubi? I'm like, they did iTunes, they got Amazon. I'm like, what the fuck? So I, I put on my little PlayStation, I download the Tubi app, and there are the two fil three films, three of my films, two two of the Fred Carpenter and another one that uh, I did with a buddy, Dan, uh, video guys that we did many years ago. They're all on Tubi. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, so I'm watching, but I didn't realize that Tubi is a, it's commercials. 
which is kind of fun. So yeah. it's like yeah. watching a, a, a Fred Carpenter uh, a horror, uh, cop movie that we did. And then, you know, block, you know, subway commercial. Comes <laughs> 30 on. second and advert like, comes up. Yeah. Going on right? <laughs> so, so my point was, what was my point? I was making a point. Um, and I would just say with Tubi, thank God. I mean, since you made that deal and, and you're just, you, you're, you were, we're getting to know all different platforms. Right. The amount of money that you'll make on an A V O D advertising video on demand than an S V O D, which would be like um, Amazon, right? Some monthly uh, subscription, thing. yeah. Right. So th the quality of advertisers is very high on Tubi. We make more money mm. from Tubi. Yeah. I would say probably seven to ten times more money on Tubi than we do on, on Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think I want to say that's correct with these as well. That that's why it stood out to me. I was like, yep. "What the hell is Tubi?" Yeah. Um, but it really depends on the deal they made. Like, there's there's something in South Africa they did where they made it's like there's some channel somewhere that somebody bought the thing. Right. right. So right. whatever deal they're making is what they're doing. Right. Oh, but that was my question. I, that's what I wanted to say. Is when you're building your budget. Yeah. Yes. The mistake that was made on a lot of the things that I've worked on is yes, they're all out there. Yes. They're on Amazon Prime. They're on Tubi. They're right. on iTunes. They're everywhere. Yeah. Nobody knows they're there. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> so what, how much of that money are you saying, we got to make sure we promote this Right, sucker? right, right. You know, um, that's right. the mistake Promotion. that's made. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we can give a shout out to uh, Goldman McCormick, boys, PR yeah. firm, mm -hmm. top 100 in <laughs> Forbes magazine. Um, <laughs> we work uh, directly with a PR firm. Yeah. And... Um, their quotes, listen, they're not cheap, right? They're yeah. they're about four thousand a month, um, but if you're playing at that level, you're going to guarantee a certain amount yeah. of radio, a certain amount of print, a certain amount of podcasting, but interviews. most importantly, yeah. you're going to guarantee some television interviews, and those television interviews are worth, you know, depending on what syndication, whether it's CBS, whether it's a breakfast show. Um, are, are worth you know when we did msnbc it's probably worth about ten thousand dollars sure when it's when you do sort of a cbs breakfast show i you know anywhere between three to four i yeah. think twenty twenty five hundred yeah. uh that for that show um i did an interview with jesse ventura yeah that that was great with his show okay so, so this is a good question yeah so for the kinds of films that we're making yes mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. That that's the platform they're going to end up on. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean it's if we hit if we get the HBO deal, God bless us. Right. And, yeah. You know, we get the the Miramax deal or, yeah. or whoever. Yeah. The, Netflix is a, really the deal. Yeah. Or, but but if, if Netflix, Netflix Apex, is really the, yeah. the, the number the one. Yeah, exactly. But, but for the Amazon world, yeah. the Amazon Tubi world, right? Tubi's what, higher than Amazon for sure. Right. Yeah. But what is the kind of advertising they're suggesting you do? Oh. Like what is it? TV appearances, like what is the kind of stuff they want you to do? Uh, yeah, I would say TV. Tel television, 100%. TV over radio for sure, because not a lot of people listen to radio right. nowadays. Yeah. You know, that's not where they get their source information, but definitely television and social media. Yeah, it's television, YouTube. Mm -hmm. We have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. You and we advertise as a company yeah. now in the past two years yeah. on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. And Facebook. Yeah. We run ads. We have a budget for that amount. And we run those ads that have a link to the Tubi To link. redirect you to those platforms. We used to have the link that would go, let's say. Where do say, the ads, how do they, they just show up? So they, they there's. Is it based al on inter like algorithm interest? Algorithm Correct. interest. You can, you can do them automatic, but you can also do them in terms of like, you can put like, you know, Sundance Film Festival. Gotcha. Tags. Tribeca. Yeah. Tags, yeah. Yeah. SEO. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 And so. And so people who are in like cinema, film, like, like, okay. you know, film is not dead, let's Cinephile. say tags, cinephiles, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, um, that's, that's the advertising campaign that we've been actually, we, and we also run a campaign also on Google and Google's more expensive. Uh, Google's more expensive than Instagram, but I think it's a bit more effective. Mm -hmm. So we have. You know, we have a, a certain amount, let's say, I don't know, we have, we, we run, let's say, uh, our budget, let's be honest, how much do we spend on our ads? I, I think we spend... And is it, is it company budget or is it specific target? Like everything is its own little thing. Like this film has, this is the advertising for yeah. this film. Every yeah. film has okay. a different yeah. budget. Yeah, yeah so exactly. We, so, yeah, because our, our, 
our, our company budget pays still for salaries and, and different projects and, and, and people that, that are the outside of the two people, there's a f- five others, sure. right. That right. are on our team. Um, we spend, I, we, I don't think we spend very much money on, and we try to, we're very economic about our, our ad spend. We spend probably, um, I would say 60 a month on Google. And we probably spend another 40 to 50 on Amazon and Instagram. It's only beneficial once you have a film ready to go. Right. And it's a, it has to be directed to that film that is directed to that link. And you need to have reports. Again, the Laura and Stefano playbook. How did you know this? Trial, Trial and, and error. error. Yeah. We spent money that we wasted right. and then we got better at the algorithms right. to figuring right. out so, how we spent right. be- how I'm we really gonna... curious about this so yeah. I'm going to mm. dive in a little harder sure. on come, this come, one, come which on. is no. let's say the film you're working on now which is the documentary about Al Al Diaz yeah. Jean-Michel Basquiat yeah. who yep. was uh, a graffiti artist in the yes. 80s and uh, okay so let's say Same-o. that yeah let's say that <laughs> let's say that film is wrapped it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing it's hits the festivals it's won an award your investors are you know, they're not seeing any money, but it's okay because, you know, they've, they've they made a beautiful they thing, made, made a beautiful thing yeah. in a tax shelter and they got their knees to <laughs> serve coffee, whatever it is. The thing is done. If it's Laura and I, it's, it's probably coffee. their niece, yeah. Yeah. their, their, their husband, their next door neighbor, their yeah. next door neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. everybody's in the picture. Everybody's, so in the everybody's picture. made the picture. Yeah. You've done it. And the sales agent has got the deals made and they're, and they're, and they're selling, and they're selling it to dis- distributors who are now it's on Tubi, it's everywhere. Yeah. How do you, for that kind of a thing, Mm -hmm. because this is where we, this is the world we're in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even narrative. Yeah. It's going to be these niche sort of art films or, or even horror, whatever it is. Yeah. How do you advertise that? Like, is it a, these things you're talking about, are they focused? Like, is it like. Your PR guy goes. We're just going to run a bunch of Google. like I don't understand so, how okay, to get a, people to know that no, it's that's there. A good question, so, yeah. so, so good question. So, so there are two uh, budgets that we make. The first budget is the real PR firm. So when we hire Goldman McCormick, we literally don't do anything say, except do we block out an entire month, month, yeah, or whatever how long the contract is. Let's say the the contract. Let's say it's four thousand dollars for one month, and so it's an eight thousand dollar contract for for sixty days. Right. You bl- you make sure that you're available for all those times because the, the television networks are going to give you Thursday Thursday second five right. second notice seven, right, exactly. seven, seven o'clock, and they're going to give you yeah six minutes of airtime. If you're lucky, if sometimes you're lucky. we get 10, but if you're on a national syndicated show and you get five minutes of airtime, yeah, that's you huge. are, that's, that's huge, huge. huge. So, so that's, that's, that's the number one right. where the spending for, for us goes. Mm-hmm. The other thing also about that, that spend is as a company for Russo Films International, it stays on you know, for, it lives forever. You know, when you're on MSNBC. That's you think, right. it just, so it's, it's, it's part of, yeah. it's part of the, and it's leverage. It's for leverage. the next one. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's a separate budget but, right and, there. But, and that's, you need someone for that. You need yeah. a real specialist for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, outside of our, 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 our um, circle of competence inside the circle of competence that we can do is being millennials of being aware of how to advertise a trailer for the film. Yeah. Once it has a link to Tubi or Amazon or any, and, how, and how do you do that? You, you millennial so, brain. So you, you set up, you set up an, an advertising yeah. account, you set up an advertising account, you set your budget and you put your link of the actual link for anybody who's watching, you would set up an advertising. You'd say, at, create a promotion on Instagram. For example, let's use Instagram. You create a promotion. You would use either a photograph, which would be the key art, mm-hmm. so a poster sure. or a scene, and you would have a written part about like coming soon, available here, excited to share, or you use um, you use video, you use the trailer, and and then when the person clicks. And then you have an option that says learn more. We usually put learn more or mm-hmm. watch more. Watch more, yeah. And when the person hits watch more or see more, whatever you, you put, yeah. we do watch more. When you click on the watch more, that takes you out of the Instagram ad and takes you directly to seeing to be immediately. Okay. So, 
So in that Instagram ad, I would imagine is where the the uh, search engine optimization tags. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah. is that going to show up in my feed? Am it I going to am I, I going to see your stuff? Right. So based so algorithmically. So yeah. Actually, so so let me ask you a question. Have you seen? Our ads? Have you ever seen a sponsored ad? I don't think so. From us on Instagram. On Instagram, I, don't think, I may, I may have seen. I thought, you know what? It's very possible. I may have thought you have posted a Russell, you know, your Russell films. I may have thought that was a post. Right, right. right. But it's, you're telling me it might have been an it ad. Might have been a sponsored I think it ad, might yeah. have been an ad. It yeah. might have been an ad because yeah. possible. because it'll just say it'll have a small little italicized part on the bo- on the top that says sponsored. Okay. When it says sponsored, you you know it's an ad. Uh, for our for our stories, there's four videos. So you, if you even if someone is not like, oh god, right, right. oh my god, like, <laughs> this documentary, <laughs> how many god, times are you see like <laughs> a Rosso film? But they have to snap it four times. Right. So I I picked a video link that was sixteen, so fifteen, yeah, so fifteen exactly. minutes. So it's fifteen divided by four. They have to snap it four times. It's like Jesus uh, Christ. Okay, no snapping. Uh, sometimes. So that's 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 one option. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, where where we have an ad, so we, you should see that you yeah. should see that up. And then uh, another one that we do is we'll put anecdotal things. Well, sometimes I'll put like a picture of like we'll, we'll put pictures of like key art or, right. or, or so it's so it's PR firm mm-hmm. for the TV media because that's yeah. gold. Absolutely. That's A yeah. plus. That's A plus. And you plus. use it as leverage you're, you're for the next on, thing. Yeah. They put you on podcast. They put you on right. CBS. But this morning. That's right. Yeah. Print. Yeah. Print. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and that's where you're pitching the movie. This is where you can see it. Um, and you are handling social media. Yeah targeted with tags and and that's pretty much how you're driving traffic those two angles right yeah. instagram um, facebook we Google only ads. do that because we don't have as a, we're, we're still i mean we're a boutique production company right if we were to do that all around there are companies that do it's like seven thousand a month oh yeah they include everything. they include social media strategy and yeah okay. and you don't need yeah. that i i mean i i've never found i need someone and I think Laura feels that I, I, I want you can, you know, yeah, no, no, we, we, you, like you said, you need something to target what's outside of your realm of competency. Right. Yeah. So why would we pay an extra like 5,000 to include a package? So on... let me ask you, is that budget mm. because it's targeted for each project Yeah. that 6,000 for two months of the PR firm right. and blah, blah for whatever else. Is that part of what you're pitching to the, to the investors, what they're paying for? Like are they are, are the investors of that is, is part of their money? You are saying is the PR being pitched to the investor to say, hey, well, your well, money's going to well, go to yeah, this? Yeah, what I'm saying is I'm giving you a check for right, right. X amount of money. Part of that money is production, it's everything, but we're going to use it for advertising too. And this is what we like. In other words, it's not all in one pot, and you just right. You're you're, you're is each project paid for? Like the pay, PR there's, a budget, yeah. there's, okay. a, there's a budget. There's a there's a there's a budget on that end yeah, because you which you, you you want to show them. Uh, ultimately when it comes down to when you say <laughs> we're not going to make any money <laughs> but you really aren't i mean you will have a chance to make more money mm-hmm. right, if you're driving the ad and that's why the alg- and that's why understanding the value of your ad spend i mean this is what's great about running your own uh, running our own company is that we can see over time through our mistakes oh now we're spending less, but we're driving more traffic to get more money. Right. And this is takes pro- a process, right? And each film is different. If it's a documentary, it's it's got to be different. And if it's a narrative film, but but yeah. but you have to the investors have to know in the beginning. You ha- we have to advertise. Yeah. If we don't advertise, nobody's going right. to see That's this it. film. And they, I've never met a, a producer <laughs> who says. You know, we shouldn't be on this oh, show, worth it. right? Yeah. No, and, no. and they yeah, and yeah. usually, if they're investing that amount of money, they're not the four thousand at the back end when you've already yeah. completed the film. That's usually no, the my, easiest sell. I I, yeah. I didn't expect that, but my question was: when you're getting that money in the beginning, are you in your head going this much for this? I I it depends on the project. It I, depends. I, yeah. I I, I, so I do. I put. Let's say it's four thousand. Right. Um. I'll say I'll put a thousand. And okay. then I'll ask for an extra three. Yeah. I I, I tried. I tried. 
it's just like film. Because it would seem to me that, like, man, that's it. That's the, it's all for naught. Yep. Unless they it's know, all dependent on that leg, right? get somebody yeah. to watch the thing. Well, you and I, I were... got four movies out there right now. That right. Seen, I haven't seen a dime, <laughs> you know, it's, and that's it. Well, you and I were having this conversation about money for, <laughs> for film festivals, yeah. right? When we were talking about a lot of filmmakers oh, yeah, who yeah. don't who who don't ever think about what the submissions they are. Budget for, for submissions. They don't, they don't budget for submissions. Yeah. Yeah. But um, look, there's so much that you're trying to get through. Sure. I'm sympathetic to any you know, all filmmakers that are trying to get a project just done that, uh, I put a thousand, I put a thousand, I tell them and I say, listen, you know, listen, we probably can get a better PR firm and these guys, we're just going to need an extra three and let's see if you don't, if we don't like it, we'll, we'll finish the contract and whatever it is. But once they see you on TV, and yeah. once it airs, oh, yeah, yeah, then they're in. Oh they're, yeah. Well, again, that's the that's leverage. It totally that's the alters the. And then yeah. you know, and then your your production company for the next pitch is as seen on, right? Yeah. As seen exactly. On, yeah. As seen in. Exactly. And it's all just leveraging one. All right, right. So I think I get the process. So before we, I don't want to. I'm going to wrap it up in a little bit. But before we do that, I want to go back to just some specifics, and and this can be rapid fire, kind of just. Mm just for me so that I know where to put things in the notes later, but for people listening and watching. All right. Uh, grants. Yeah. Where to look for these things. Yeah. And, and the, um, again, fiscal sponsor. Fiscal sponsor. Fiscal sponsor. Yeah. Your favorite, your favorite two <laughs> words. You know, yeah. Where we to need to get you a fiscal well, sponsor. Also because I, the two... I, I've always needed a fiscal sponsor. <laughs> I would say, uh, NYSCA, the New York state council of the arts is a very good place to look. Love um, that, Laura. Love that. For for grants. For grants. For grants. Um, also, looking actually looking at film festivals to see if they have connections to grant organizations. Organizations, for instance, um, Sundance, the Tribeca. Tribeca Gucci Fund. They sometimes they have micro budgets that they can offer for. Explain this to me. Uh, I'm looking looking at film festivals. In if you way. go to the Tribeca Film Festival website, right. they'll have a section on their website that's specifically designated for grants, and okay. they'll tell you is this a winter cycle grant or a summer cycle grant, right? Or f- for that fiscal year, um, and they'll have grants like something called the Tribeca Gucci Fund, and I think that's geared towards social docs. All right. Yeah, and then they might have another branch that's geared towards narrative. It's an features. offshoot. I love what Lawrence just said. It's an offshoot yeah. of the Tribeca Film Festival mm-hmm. that is trying to expand as an umbrella. Yeah, what it's trying to do. For example, Laura and I, our doc, has been put into the Sundance Institute, right? Which is not the festival, but it's part of the Sundance Institute of, exactly. of what, the, what the Sundance Institute is, is trying to promote. Yeah. So and they they offer production grants. They offer right. post production grants. Um, Real screenwriting grants. Yeah, specific. yeah. They break down different okay. aspects of production. All right. Yeah. And and I would say, yeah. So so keep going. Yeah, I don't, don't want. No. Wanna, yeah. No. No. So I would say fe- film festivals are a great resource for that because right, so, typically you think, let me just submit my film, but they'll have offshoots like that. Um, big festivals. Big festivals. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I'm trying to think. Just are you thinking like specific states or countries? Do you look in that kind of? I mean, you said New York State, but I mean. I mean, is there, would you look for, if you were going to shoot in Michigan, you'd look for the whatever. Yeah, typically if you're going to shoot, if you're going to shoot in that state, yeah. it's, a, it's be a better bet, yeah, to arts. look for grants that are geared towards that state, you okay. know? Okay, and it's usually some kind of arts council. Arts council. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So if it's New York, New York. But but again, I'd say the big two are New York and California Okay. for, for grants, you know? Right. And, and some of them are... Um, another good one is, uh, I'm trying to think of the film festival. It's a, it's a pitching film festival um and they if you win the pitch award they give you a certain amount of startup money is america i think it's yeah it's in america i think it's docklands film festival docklands yeah i think chris that's another one that chris had mentioned um where if you submit a a film pitch and it gets accepted and you know you you go on to win it it can be upwards of like twenty five thousand dollars for a starting fund i think it's called docklands film Pitch. that's the one he won yeah you're right correct exactly for his documentary um but that's specifically geared towards documentary gotcha. productions. Right. Um, but I'm trying to think in terms of other... I know that um, if actually, if you look on formerly IFP, now known as the Gotham, which I, I think they get a kick out of you saying, formerly known as IFP, <laughs> like now known as the Gotham. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. The artist yeah. formerly the artist. known as IFP. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> Touching back to Stefano's point about resources and, you know, 
they have a page a page specifically on their website that will give you a whole host of grants. Okay. Oh, a that's, whole host of documentary great... grants, post production grants, production grants. Okay. And they'll break it down in terms of different cycles for summer cycles and winter cycles. What is what's that about? Just when you when you when should you should submit. submit. Okay. Exactly. You kind of want to you you want to align it to when you are thinking of starting filming, but. And when they'll you, tell you if it's winter, summer, if it's accepted on a rolling basis, which doesn't matter. It doesn't right. matter when in the year you submit it. Right. You can submit it in February, March, April. Um, they even have like women in film grants, sure. like ultra specific yeah, incentivized right. grants. Right, right, right. So yeah, there's a section on their page that has like a whole breakdown. So I, and then and the other thing, just to summarize for grants, is when you're doing that, yeah, just be invested that you're going to be there's going to be some work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's be a yeah. couple of weeks worth of work. Another thing, too, is save the templates that you do. Well, do, because you're going to recycle them gonna, afterwards. Yeah, and you're going to have to adjust like, oh, them. I have to start from scratch. No, it's like, yeah. save everything in, your, in Google Docs. I know Stefano hates Google Docs, but um, <laughs> for the kind of Luddites guy. out there, yeah, just save everything because you never know what could be applicable to another. I got gotcha. you grant organization right. create your own templates for your that's it work. Yeah. yeah brand your own work in that way you know <laughs> um so yeah all and right fi- and find grants you know you know use all the resources throw as much paint on the wall if you are part if you identify as a minority yeah if you are latino if you are hispanic if you're an african-american if you're a woman filmmaker Use those resources that are available to you. Like the Ford Foundation and grant. If, right. if you're an old white guy, you shit out of luck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> those days are over. Man. Then well, you better get yourself a partner that's, well, you know, well, Aboriginal. Because you know, or... <laughs> we're just... I not... have... I, I, I have... I have... Uh, I, I, See, Lord, I'm, now I'm you a, know what's... Now I know. What's the, exactly. I know the rules <laughs> now. <laughs> We apply I, we apply to the female grants, but I try to leave my name out of it, you know? I just really try, you know, oh, Laura's... by the way! Yeah. Just reverse it, just say um, the phrase that's Not a one-woman show, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, but, uh, and then some, by the same token, are, like, pleasantly surprised. You know, they're like, wow, that's interesting to have a male-female duo. Yeah, I'm uh, sure that... I'm sure happens. That you, yeah, happens like, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, they're really, like... Uh, it's refreshing. Moved by that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you, you were saying, like, with minority groups and stuff, I know the Ford Found- Foundation grant... Like they will give extra credence to people who and Sundance fall too. in that yeah. pool. Yeah, use, especially now uh, you with know, Sundance. And and use those resources. Because, yeah, you might as listen, well. Listen, everybody starts off the road in a different place. And yeah. I, I really, if anybody's watching and they're, you know, whatever background they're from. Yeah. You know, we're all different ages. We're all different backgrounds, different races, different religions. You know, use whatever you've got to throw as much paint onto the wall. Right, that's right. what I would say onto the canvas. And then, so, but again, like we said in the beginning, yeah. that's the that's the most bureaucratic, most time consuming, the most. most pain in the yeah. ass. Oh yeah, yeah. And maybe least fruitful. You just never know. You just never, you just know. never know. It's a shot in the dark. Um, so then, the other thing was the financial. Uh, so, yeah. A fiscal sponsor. fiscal sponsor. A fiscal sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that you brought up. So one of the things that links the fiscal sponsors to the grants is that I had forgotten that the fiscal sponsors often do have lots of resources also for grants. That's right. That I had I'd for, not just for finding producers and to and for programs, but also for one ooh, ones okay. ones that they've submitted to. Like they'll say, hey, you should take a look at this grant because in the past we've worked with them. We've okay. had projects move right. on to right. be accepted right. by those organizations, and it's like, wow. And they'll, and they'll also tell you, listen, guys, you know, the National Endowment of the Arts, you're not ready mm-hmm. to apply. I mean, th- that happened to us back in oh, summer. Yeah. I think that we had, yeah. what, what was that? That's it? interesting. What, it? What's that about? Uh, uh, you know, there's... With creative visions, right? Yeah, wherever, yeah. where you know, maybe you're not fully into principal photography yet, or, or you're, you haven't... Oh, so they, they want to see a certain stage of... Yeah. Well, they want you to succeed. They want to see. They do. Okay, yeah. Okay. This, like, this is a they good do. bet. They're yeah. not setting you up for failure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because they know they've had other films in their catalog do that and succeed. So they have a sense of yeah. where you're at in that process of, of what you need, what your chances are. So, yeah. all right. So the IFP form Gotham, formerly IFP and uh, creative visions. Were there other ones that you looked at and other I'm sure, I'm there sure there, there were, ones. but so yeah. where would I look for that if I'm watching? It? Oh, you can, you can. Just we Google. found it on Google. I would Google. We found it on Google. I would Google a fiscal sponsors and again, the ta- fiscal sponsorship for, for film, for film yeah. production. Exactly. Yeah. And again, thinking on producers that you know, maybe they have, you know, some 
some suggestions and thinking back to people that you've met at film festivals there you know it's it's all and out again, there. I, I always go back to the old imdb pros is something you could yes. find on there yeah because yeah. i'll find absolutely definitely all kinds of absolutely oh yeah it's a great resource, resource. it's an amazing it's resource. resource we use it we use it all the time but yeah. there are so many databases online to yeah. find that yeah kind of stuff. absolutely and 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 I would imagine that there's just a simple contact entry point to that. Yeah. To yeah. There's, there's yeah. a straight up application. Yeah. Okay. Usually a, a phone call that you can call to set up with somebody. Yeah. It, it's always a personal approach. That's a good approach. There's usually two people before you apply or one person before you get to the second person who, you know, sifts you through and then they'll move you on to a second I, person. I don't know if I yeah. asked you this question. What what are they getting at? What is what is their their criteria? Their criteria is just to have somebody the, their films that are part of their catalog. Part of their catalog. Yeah, part yeah. of their catalog. There's no financial. No, because they're listed as a, as a nonprofit. Okay, that's I, right. I, you know, I, I actually I, I, let me say something very specific. I think that there's a small margin of what we pay into, which is I think like two or three percent. Very small of the amount. There's yeah. a there's an administrative cost. But right. Uh, yeah, but the okay. admin cost has always been less low. than four percent. Yeah, it's, right. it's tiny. Yeah, I yeah. just want to know what the, what their if you're just app, applying for free is, yeah. or what their gain is on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think I, I think I've got a lot of info here. Is there anything I that uh, any any advice that I that you came in here wanting to spout out that I have not we have not mined for the independent filmmaker looking to find some dollars? <laughs> Don't get discouraged. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, d- yeah. No, no. Go with your and point. Don't get discouraged. Uh, work as a team. Don't, don't, don't think. Th- use a t- uh, um, use your resources and double check with other people who have similar interests together, so you guys are both pulling together your ideas. Yeah. That's the best thing that I that I love about working with Laura. Yeah. We always double check our ideas as right. soundboards off to each other. And, you know, that's probably the best thing that makes me not lose hope in, in raising funds. Yeah. And and don't be afraid to embrace trial and error. I, I know well, we've that's touched... Well, that's a good one. We've right? t- yeah, exactly. We've touched ba- base, back to that so many times, but I think a lot of people get discouraged by that. Like, oh, I, the unknown. You're always going to be facing an unknown in any new endeavor, just like right. we were when we were applying to telefilm or dealing right. with grants or what the heck is a fiscal sponsor, you know? You're always going to have that initial unknown circumstance so just right i was talking to a casting director on a podcast last week and uh, she's like i eat no for breakfast (laughs) and i I was like yeah that's pretty much the business no matter what phase of it in you gotta just eat no for breakfast and move on to lunch you know and just forget about breakfast for a while so all right that's that's cool so um so what's what stage of uh, production are we, are we in? Are we? Do, I feel. Are we doing a an a, a <laughs> Gotham uh, pro, progress report? Yeah. Where are you, what are you guys doing right now? Formerly, I. You, you working on multiple things? What or are you doing, it? Laura? What are you? Yeah. What, what are you up to? What are you doing? What, what are we doing? What are we doing? Stone principal photography for our for our feature. Yeah, Dream Beyond the Dark. Dream Beyond the Dark. Yeah. Dream Beyond the Dark, which is the that's the blind the artist painter. feature film about yeah. a blind painter. Yeah, we're starring about. River Phoenix. <laughs> um, <laughs> Greatest performance Which by him, in, posthumously. Po- yeah, posthumously. Yeah. Yeah, right. And Clara McGregor. And Clara McGregor. Ewan right. McGregor's daughter. Okay. Yep. And uh, Danielle Goulden from Quantico. Exactly. And um, uh, Jacopo Rampini is a Jacopo Rampini is on Netflix. Big Italian actor. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, that that we will be produ- will be. F- We'll be filming, filming that, that for the rest of our lives now. <laughs> <laughs> Till the end of April, I hope. Yeah. Maybe, maybe May. Maybe okay. May. And then you got the Al Diaz, Al Diaz documentary. documentary. Yeah, we just put out a trailer for Is there a title for that one? Nothing. Nothing less than wild. The Al Ooh. Diaz documentary. Oh, yeah. Nice. That went through like 10 different revisions. <laughs> I remember one day Steph was just like, what do you think of this? No, what do you think? No, no, this is not. No, what do you think of this? And then finally, after like 10 splashes of paint on the wall all right yeah that's good started shooting that already right oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. we've already had three principal photography days on it yeah awesome and it's amazing it's a it's a it's a we already have a trailer sort of a teaser trailer again yeah talking about action in practice to the emerging filmmaker right feature film oh yeah raised a lot of capital and still have more yeah yeah yeah. and don't be afraid to ask questions too like if you i was talking about this with someone the other day just by nature of our job i'm paying way more attention now to credits 
in <laughs> films. I'm like, who is the archival producer of this movie? Yeah. Yeah. Like, this yeah. documentary is amazing. It's relying yeah. just on stock footage. Like, yeah. how do I get in touch with this archival right, producer? Right, 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 right. And, um, you know, a lot of them are more, they're more willing to talk than, than you give them credit for, you know? Sure, sure. Music supervisors. Then you're scared to I ask. Need, I really yeah. would love to have. <laughs> Licensing Huge. fees yeah. and stuff, yeah. 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 Again, stuff that's like outside of our realm of competency. It's like, I want to know more about this. Right. And know? it's, and like we said, that stuff is out there to find. It's not oh, yeah. like you can't find it. It's not sacred. Yeah. You can find knowledge. It, and yeah. it's just a matter of the entryway to introducing yourself to yeah. them. Yeah. And that's where, you know, a little yeah. of that third party leverage comes in. It's yeah. like, Hey, I don't know if you saw the thing I just did, but <laughs> it was on Tubi. And... Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. I feel like Tubi's a good channel good. for you. Tubi is oh, yeah. Tubi's you can, all, yeah. you can make a lot more money Tubi on Tubi than you are on Amazon. Tubi. Yeah, well, unfortunately for the projects that I'm in, the money's never going to get down to me because <laughs> all the work I did on that was for points. Like, yeah, because nobody had any money, yeah. so it's like all the money that was invested went to you know yeah. Armand Asante. I think he got more. Oh, we, got, oh, <laughs> we, got, uh, we got more projects coming up. Oh yeah. Well, I I I don't think I'm in the uh, the the blind guy movie. I don't no. think I'm in that one. No, I but, checked, but I'm definitely not in it. There's a there's a couple projects. So we're gonna we're gonna put Definitely. you in. Definitely, we've, right. we've 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 you we're know thinking ten steps. You ahead. know about us. You know we never do just one project at a time. No. I don't have any niece or nephew speed. that I can I can put in there. You're in a different. Sorry, category. you're in the big leagues. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to worry about yeah, yeah. that. We're not. We're not. That's not. <laughs> All right. You're not in that you don't zone. need to pay an entrance fee. All right. Well, you guys, uh, this has been lovely, uh, and it's incredibly informative because this okay. is like super nuts and bolts. Where do, what do I type in and where do I go? And a nice layout. I like the the lay, even even the the crowdfunding thing, which I and I would think you could return to that at any point. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I always, like I said, envisioned that as a finishing thing. It's like, oh man, we need an extra yeah. five grand. We don't. And have there it. are people who do that. And I have a thing to show. Gaps. It's right. like right. I have the thing finished. But right. to start it out that way is is great. To go right from that to. Uh, tax shelter to investors to yeah. you know leverage on so real real simple uh, and complicated at the same time because <laughs> you got to do the work it's a lot of work exactly and build the relationships that's right that's and right save your templates <laughs> yeah and, and you know there's no free lunch in anything no so but if you do it you have how many films six I've lost I count many stuff. I'm, I've, okay do you want to start how early do you want to go um we should do so before you go before you go to, to, to my monk, monk in parallel in parallel we've been here before moon and deep winter moon and deep winter um i was in that one a, a, yeah yes, you were you were That's right. <laughs> a, a dream beyond the dark dream beyond the dark al diaz al diaz um, um oh, the, line the, of descent the, did you line do the descent. documentary the amazon i think you skipped that one. Oh. Holy the day cow. i had to grow up for god's the sake the girl who, who cannot, cannot speak. speak so that's 10 right there 10 10 yeah. films and by, then we're doing the commission piece um commission piece in april yeah, by, yeah. modern by putting, dance by putting your hands in the, in the dirt and doing oh, the yeah. work yeah oh, you yeah. actually produce work. yeah oh yeah so we love directing together yeah and we love directing in general but we love yeah. we love just working definitely I working mean, working through ideas you know and, and just really like just pushing each other to get off right. that and whoever's watching, we really want you to impart on you. Like, if this is really what you love to do, yeah. give yourself a long runway yeah, because you're doing right. what you love. So you might as well put in the work like right away. Yeah. Because right. it's, it's really hard. But the longer you wait, it's even harder. It's just inevitable. So too. just it's inevitable to just work hard. So you might as well start working now. <laughs> That's right. You know? That's right. right. It's like, do that crowdfunding right away. Get yeah. it. It's my yes. least favorite. I would rather do the, the, the investment right. meeting. So do, yeah. do it right away. Start right. from the beginning. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. That That's the button right there. Get to work. I appreciate it. I appreciate thank you, you all this information. And uh, it certainly helped me. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it's going to help plenty of people out there. So uh, thanks for coming by again. Thanks I for having it. us. Thank you, Russ. Thank you. All right.